Okay, cool. Let's let's go with what we have here. Sorry, my hair looks crazy. Okay, it's just I'm letting it grow out. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, um, actually, this one's not it. Can we go to oh. the other one, the, the GSA Leadership Mastery? It's down here. Um, oh, it's, it's actually right here. It's right. And then we'll show that one after, but so if you could please just leave that one open. All right. So we went through this last time, right before I left. I'll go through it again. Because who can tell me what, what, what I covered? All right, let me ask. Uh, we'll test you guys. We'll test you guys. What is the leader? What is the leader? Don't show. What is the leader? What is the leader? Okay. We covered it last time, right? We got to give a simple definition. A simple definition. The simpler the definition, the more clear we are with what it is, the more we can strive to be that. You have to be very clear with what it is. And the simpler it gets, the clearer it gets. The clearer it gets, the more possible it is to, to, to obtain it, to see it. So we'll go through. Actually, I don't think this is working. The batteries might be. Uh, oh, China? Uh, all right, perfect. This is a great leader. People who know how to achieve goals and inspire people along the way, which is what you said. Let's be clearly defined. As you can see, it says, know how to achieve goals. So what are some goals that you have? And are you achieving those goals? And in the process, are you inspiring people along the way to also achieve their goals? It's as simple as that. It doesn't say people who make millions. It doesn't say anything like that. It just says people who know how to achieve goals. We talked about this last time, right? Leaders are not born. They are created. So we know that they're created for sure. Just because you're the pioneer. Don't think just because I'm the first person that signed up amongst all of you guys that that automatically makes me the leader. That's something that's earned day in and day out. And I'm not even saying that I'm the leader to you guys. I'm not. You guys have your own leaders that are encouraging you and that are working with you. So I am not even the leader in this room. Okay, I'm not. I have, I'm a leader to my group and to others as well, but you guys have your own leader. So it's a pioneer myth. It's not true. The position that just because I'm a three-star diamond doesn't automatically make me the leader here. The manager myth, just because you're the boss doesn't make you the leader, right? Just because you know the most doesn't mean that you're the leader. And just because you're a business owner, doesn't make you a leader. Okay, moving forward, I'm going quickly through this. This is the one I wanted to talk about. Desire and coachable. You need these two things in order to be successful. In this business and in anywhere that I can think of where you're going to be a leader. Anywhere. In your family, where if you're going to be a leader in your family, if you're going to be a leader in sports team, leader in USANA, doesn't matter. You need these two things. Okay, so desire. What does that mean? That you want more. Have you guys ever heard people say this? Oh, I'm, I'm comfortable. Have you guys ever heard that before? Sure. Have you ever felt that before? Sure. Okay, let me ask you the question. Why are you comfortable? What do you guys think it is? The standards. The standards. What else? Give me some other examples. It's easier. It's easier. Okay. Fear. Fear. So why say I'm comfortable if really it's I'm afraid, right? When somebody says I'm comfortable, because are people not afraid but comfortable? Are there people like that? Yeah. So so it, does, does that kind of make sense? Like, yes. like I understand some people are afraid and they lie and say they're comfortable. But what about people who say I'm just comfortable? I'll give you guys the answer. And it's very easy. If you lack desire, you lack imagination. That's it. Simple as that. Stay with me, okay? If you lack desire, you lack imagination. Think about it. What keeps you in the same position is because you, you do not imagine something else. I'll give you guys an example. Perfect example. Okay? You tell somebody, you're comfortable. And they go, yeah, I'm comfortable. I give you a billion dollars, what do you do? 
They go, hmm, let me think here. I'd get a, a new house. I'd take my mom to Europe. I See, what happened? You started to imagine at that moment. Imagination took over. Do you, do you guys see this? So let that be a lesson here for all of us. The more driven the person, the bigger the imagination. So you got to practice this almost. Stay with me. Like write it down if you have to, but don't forget this one. Because without these two things, you're going nowhere. Desire. I hear people say this all the time, and, and I believe it's a limiting belief. Where people say, oh, I'm good. I don't need, I don't need that. When people say stuff like that, and I'm like, what do you mean you don't need it? Yeah, I don't really need it. Okay, well, maybe you don't need that, but what, what about something else? No, I'm good. I, I'm good where I'm at. I'm good where I'm at. How do you guys work with those people? How many of you guys have ever invited somebody, and you brought them, and they go, I'm comfortable. I don't need this. I don't need this. How do you work with those people? you got to be honest with them. And don't be like, you know what your problem is? You don't have imagination. <laughs> like, if that's how you're going to say it, you're going you're gonna to lose a friend right then. Because that's you putting yourself above that person. Yeah. And you never want to put yourself above anybody. You're ne- and don't ever put yourself below anybody either. Be right here. That's where we're all at, guys. We're all on the same level. Okay? We all have different results, but you're never better than anybody and you're never worse than anybody. This is, how, this is a healthy practice of where to put yourself when you're communicating. When you're communicating with someone, you cannot communicate like this. And you don't communicate like this. You communicate like this, eye to eye. I feel that it's hard for people to even make eye contact sometimes. Like they communicate like this because they feel below. Don't ever feel below. Make eye contact. Practice that eye contact. Okay? But anyway, back to desire, right? Imagination. What do you imagine? Are you imagining stuff? That's why when you spend time with somebody who's making more, your imagination runs wild because you start to think, hmm, it'd be nice to have that. And maybe, you know, maybe I never even thought of this. Mm-hmm. And this is why you should say yes to a lot of things because you don't want to limit yourself. Yes. Okay? Here's another thing. Stop saying you don't want things that you can't afford yet. That's limiting your imagination. So people talk about, why why do you talk about this, Mike? Are you telling us this? No, no, I'm not just telling you. I'm telling you so that you understand it well enough to teach someone else. You're going to run into people in your business that don't want more. And it's not because they don't want more. It's because they don't have an imagination anymore. They stopped dreaming. That's what it is. Are we all clear on this? Yeah. Okay, I want you guys to like let that one sink in because even when you're not moving, it's because you're not imagining anymore. So if you're like stuck for a second, you got to think, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Where's my desire? What am I imagining right now? beach okay see it like it's almost like a practice i know tony robbins tells you put yourself in that place like what's your happy moment and put yourself there happier and you're like happier you're like oh shoot and it's kind of like right he pushes those boundaries Mm -hmm. i'm trying to give you like the basic basic like you got to start with imagination or else you're not going anywhere so think about like what do you imagine imagine something like richard branson He'll be at next year's GoPro, right? Are you guys going to be our next year's GoPro? That's the question. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, I got a phone call, and they charged $30,000 on my American Express, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> but I did it for us. Thank you. Even though I was Thank in another you. country, I texted the numbers, and boom, swiped, and the American Express got the fraud alert, and I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, this, is right. this is real. This is really happening. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever spent $30,000 like that in one shot? Okay. I, I don't know. Can you imagine it, though? You see? Can you imagine pulling it out and going, bam? Now, just, just so you guys know with American Express, you got to pay it off the following month. There's no, you know, I'll make payments. <laughs> you guys know, right? That's how it works? Yeah. yeah, there's no payments here. That means in 30 days, 45 days from then, it's got to be paid in full. All right? Now, I know some of you guys have bought your GoPro tickets already. Thank you. <laughs> 
going to help. <laughs> but the rest has to be paid. Okay? And that's the whole point, is that we really need to take a look at these things. But imagine, though, being in a position where you could do something like that. Like, do you imagine those things? Do you imagine walking into a dealership and picking the one you want? Do you imagine being with your kids all the time? Do you imagine that? Like, you know what I'm imagining nowadays? Like, you know where I'm at right now? Like, I'm imagining, I'm, I'm really, like, really, like, in the, in the mindset of, like, I want a family. I really do. Like, I need a wife first, but, you know, <laughs> after that, right? But, but the whole point is that I'm putting myself in, I'm imagining these things, and it's driving me. Like, you know what I imagine? I imagine homeschooling my kids. And so I'm going to say, they're going to be sheltered. And I'm not going to homeschool them. I'm going to world school them. Where when we're actually learning about ancient Egypt, we'll be in Egypt yes. learning about ancient Egypt. Yes. Not, not, not like in the book. Okay, when we're learning about the Alamo, we'll be at the Alamo. When we're learning about the Battle of Normandy, we'll be at the beach of Normandy, standing there where everybody freaking went down. Make sense? What started World War II, the invasion of Poland? We'll be in Poland saying this is where they marched in, right here, through these streets. Like, I want to do it like that. Yes. But, but I'm imagining it. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's creating this. Even at where I'm at now, like, don't think I'm done. Like, no, I'm still dreaming. Like, I'm dreaming bigger. And I'm having all these fantasies and stuff. And it's just, it creates desire. It truly does. And when you get around other people, guess what it does for them? It creates desire in them too. It rubs off. So I hope you guys don't lose the sight of this. This is an important thing. Your imagination has to run wild. Imagine being debt-free. Imagine what that feels like. Imagine what that looks like. But don't imagine your bills. Imagine what it would be like without your bills. That will create desire. If you think about your bills, you'll be depressed. I think like the, the, basically the reality can depress you. It's the imagination of what could be that encourages you. This is all Tony Robbins, right? But I'm giving it to you in a different language because I understand it. I don't just know it. I understand it. I'm doing it. Do you guys understand the difference now? Yeah. That's why I started the training with what I said. I said, you, all, you, you might all know it already, but do you understand it? And until you're practicing it like that and you're teaching it, you don't fully understand yet. Now someone will say, well, yeah, Mike, put me in, put me in front of Saturday training and, and I'll show you that I understand it. You don't need to be at Saturday training to teach. You could be anywhere. You could be with your friend at a coffee shop. And being like, hey, man, what, what do you imagine? I don't know. Just say, you know what I've heard of them? That people that are driven have an imagination. And you know what? I'm realizing that I'm working on my imagination. This is what I'm imagining. You know, I'm imagining this, this, and this. What do you think about that? Like, oh, that's cool, man. And they go, oh, good for you. They're like, no, no, it's not about just good for me. I want to know what you imagine. It's, do you guys understand? Like, have these conversations. I think it's important. Like, don't let people just stay where they're at. Like, see, because I used to think desire was about people who were never satisfied. Like, you know what? I'm just never satisfied. Yeah, I, I always told you guys, right? <clears throat> Appreciate, but don't be satisfied. Because once you satisfy the imagination, you stop imagining. So don't stop imagining. Let that keep going. Over and over and over and over again. So coachability. What is coachability? To me, this is coachability. <clears throat> Not asking why until after you do it. That's the easiest definition I can give you. Coachable is not asking why until after you do it. So if I say, Abby, go talk to five people. She goes, why? She's not coachable. Because you're asking me why. I'm telling you, go do it. Remember, we're all in this business where the better you guys do, the better we do, right? Yeah. So there's no ill intention. That's what's kind of cool. There's never an ill intention in this business from your upline. Unless your upline is a total wacko, which it's possible. <laughs> but if your upline has a, a, a good head on their shoulders, there should never be an ill intention. Because if I tell somebody, Cindy, go do this, it's because I want Cindy to do well. Because if Cindy does well, then I do well. So why wouldn't I want Cindy to do well? So I'm not going to tell Cindy, go bang your head on the wall. <laughs> like, it, it, there's never going to be that intention. But I say, Cindy, go sign up two people. She goes, what do you get out of it? Well, I, I get paid. But you too. 
You follow me? Go get five customers. What do you get out of it? I make money, but don't you too? Right? So there's never like where only I win and you lose. Mm -hmm. There's never that never happens in this business. Right. Yeah. It's a win-win every single time. Right. So you have to get over that. Get get over that so that you know and you feel in your heart, okay, this is actually a good thing. And now you've accepted that there's trust because there's no way that you could win. I'm sorry, you could lose and the upline wins. There, it, it, it never seems to work that way here. Like I said, unless your upline is a sicko and then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll identify them. <laughs> but, but, but the coachable thing is don't ask why. Just do it and then ask why after you do it. So what's the logic there? Because usually after you do it and I explain to you, you'll, you'll understand it better. Versus if I try to explain it to you before you're doing it, it could be a while. It could be a while. And this delays the process. It really does. It delays success. Because I'm telling you, do this. And you're like, why? Because why? Oh, man. So now I have to really think of creative ways to explain to you. And before you know it, this has turned into a why, why, why. It's like, have you ever seen a child that goes, why? Why? Right? And you're just like, because I said <laughs> and, no, no, no. See, we can't do that to you guys, okay? <laughs> right? We can't. So it doesn't work like that here. We need leadership. So I'm telling you now, be coachable. Be coachable. So just do it and ask why after, and then you'll understand it better. So I say talk to five people. Because they're going to say, Mike, how do I build my business? I say, go talk to that person right there. Why? Just say hello to them. Why? Say hello to them. Why? <laughs> Just go over there and say, hi, how's it going? they say, hey, it's going good. All right, cool. You come back. Why did I do that? Well, that's the first step. That's called prospecting, see? You said hi, right? Yeah. Now you're going to say this. Go say hi to that person, but say, hey, hey, how's it going? Where are you from? And, and this is the second step now. See? So now you're getting, are you, are you feeling a little more comfortable with the second step? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit weird, but you know. Okay. Then the third step is this. Go say hi. Where are you from? And it, do you guys get me? It's kind of like you'll know by then. Oh, I get it. I get it. Versus telling you, all right, here's what you do. You go up to him, you say hi, and then you say this, and then you say this, and then and if I tell you the whole thing, you'll be like, uh, yeah, I need more training. <laughs> you'll never actually do it because you're, now you're thinking too much. You're thinking way too much. I've seen people who teach, like the best teachers, will say. All right, first lesson, just, just go out there and just show me what you got, you know? Show me what you can do. Okay, and you're like, okay. Like, you ever played golf or taking a golf lesson? Just show me. Show me how you hit the ball. And you're like, all right, just keep doing what you're doing. I want to see what you're doing. See, why do they do that? Because they want to see where you're at. So that's why I tell people, all right, go, go, go say hi to that person. Get their contact information. Like, what? Yeah, go. You go, hey baby, what's up? I'm like, yeah, you're definitely not there. You're definitely not there. You're in the wrong place. Okay? That doesn't work here. But at least now I know where you are. Okay? Do you guys get me on this? This is the whole process, okay? Of being coachable. All right, so how can I move my team? Push or pull? You want to pull your team. So this is where I want to talk about GoPro for next year. And this is very important. Am I pushing or am I pulling? How many do I a hundred? They were three hundred dollars each, were they? Yeah. Okay. So we bought a hundred tickets. Okay, and we've already sold quite a few of them. Like I don't have an exact number, so don't hold me to that. But we've sold quite a few of them. I would suggest if you want to pull, buy at least three. One for you, one for your right leg, one for your left leg. At the very least. So when you go there next year, you have someone on your right leg and someone on your left leg there that is being developed as you're being developed. So we say, well, I don't have a right and left yet. <laughs> Buy it so that way you're pulling. Do you guys get me on this? Yes. Put yourself in that position where you have to pull. And I know what people think, oh, man, I don't know, Mike, that sounds hard. And, and you get kind of scared, right? Well, yeah, you got to learn how to push yourself. I would say the best way is to pull. Pull yourself to that. Put the intention out there already. That's it. My intention is to have, I'm going to have more than 100 at GoPro. More than 100. 
But the point is, I already have the 100 purchased just to pull myself to it. Do you guys get me on this? <clears throat> now, next year is already sold out. Just Did you guys hear about that? It's sold out. It's sold out within minutes. That's why I put my card down because I knew it was going to sell out. Richard Branson will be there next year. Now, is that a big deal or what? Yeah. Okay, I want to know. Why do you guys think it's a big deal? Guys? You're here, right? You're in the moment? Okay. Are you thinking about like traveling around the world with your kid still? Did I leave you in the imagination? <laughs> Get back. Okay? It's Richard Branson. Richard yeah, but why is that such a big deal? Entrepreneur, not in network marketing. It has nothing to do. Okay. What does that mean for us? Think about it. To learn from him? Credibility for our industry, too. Right. To have somebody like that at that stature even be present. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear you, Jim. I hear you for sure. I believe that Janelle hit the nail on the head for me. Yeah. Like, when you talk about this industry, has it come a long way? And is it done? I remember when I used to tell people, imagine when everybody is on board with this thing. Imagine when people just say network marketing is a good thing. People say, damn, like it sucks. People think it's a pyramid and my mind, you know, she thinks I'm going to scam and you know what I mean? And I'm like, I know, but can you imagine one day that won't be the case anymore? One day everybody will be in. You want to know why I know this? Right there. Look, there's young kids now that their parents are now instilling these beliefs in them. This, this is guaranteed now, guys. It's guaranteed. I'll, in Australia, too. I was there. And people would bring their kids, 18 years old, 19 years old, to show. And they're like, pay attention. Why? Because they see that it's important to understand what I'm about to show you guys at the very end. <clears throat> and it was cool to see the youngsters there. They're like, hey, I just turned 18. I'm like, hey, awesome, man. They're like, thank you. I like what you said. And I was like, oh, man, awesome. What a great thing that an 18-year-old is here to see this. Now, you guys know that in our own team, in our own team, we actually have, like GSA, I'm talking about GSA, right? We actually have the youngest growth 25 person in the history of USANA. We have the youngest person to make $100,000 a year their first year. Did you guys know that? That's Trish. Trish is the youngest person to be a growth 25 member. She hit at 18. So she came in at 18, and by the time that year was over, she had made $100,000, and she was a growth 25 member. That's the youngest person in recorded USANA history. So is it possible for an 18-year-old to make $100,000? Yeah, we have living proof. We have somebody who's already done it. And back then, which was nine years ago or eight years ago, I don't think people were so positive about network marketing back then as they are now. So I believe it will get easier and easier as time progresses. So where is Trish now? Well, she went with me to Australia. I took her with me. Why? Because she deserved it. Remember I said, who, who deserves it? And she goes, I do. If you guys saw my post, right? And she does. She went to San Aviv. If you guys know what San Aviv is, she went to go spend $10,000 on her health, getting herself, giving herself a physical. 10 grand? Anybody here spend 10 grand on a physical? <laughs> she did. She has it like that, though. She has her personal training business. She has her USANA business. And she makes great money. She's a six-figure earner. Okay. So what else? She she also, once again, has been in USANA for a long time, never stopped her auto order. Who say, does she show up? Uh, she shows up sometimes. Sometimes people are fully committed, sometimes people are not fully committed, but she's always been on her auto order. She's always gotten her PCs. She has people on auto order in her business. She gets checks every week. That's never stopped. But after her being with me out there, what happened? I pulled her. And she goes, I see it now. And now she's like, I'm back. Let's go. She goes, I'm going to be a diamond by convention. So I'm like, oh, shoot. This is a person you don't want to take lightly. This is a person who's proven herself in the past. And when she makes a declaration like that, she comes through. So that's the goal. She says, I will be a diamond by international convention. I was like, awesome. 
So now, that's one thing in saying it. But now, right? The disciplines. Well, yeah, she's already enrolled two people since she got back. She's already set up a training for tomorrow at 1 in Burbank. She's got her team together. She's rallying up the troops. Like, it's, it's on. I believe her. I believe that it's on. And we got a lot of – we spent – Almost three weeks together, every day, every night. Like we were together all the time, dude. Now I took my brother with me, so we all slept in the same room, right? And here's one thing: make sure when you take somebody, ask them, "Are you, are you loud when you sleep?" <laughs> that's that's an important one. Okay, this is a tip for traveling. Are you loud when you sleep? Holy cow. My brother. <laughs> I slept with my headphones on the entire time. I could not sleep next to the student. It was way too loud. Okay? But but let's say we're working on it. Okay? We believe there's some health things. Son of Eve is gonna fix them up. Okay. <laughs> so point being is we got close. Everybody got close on this trip. I took my brother for the first time. You guys know that my brother is not in USANA? My younger brother is not in USANA. He's 29 years old. He doesn't do this business. His brother is a multimillionaire doing USANA, and he doesn't do the business. And you know what? I'm okay with it. That's because of this next slide. Oh, uh, this is Eric Worre. You guys saw this, right, when you guys were at GoPro? Mindset, skill set, and strategy. Those are the three parts to building a business. This is first. This is second. This is third. You need these three to make it happen. Next. This is why I'm okay with my brother. Love. You want to love them regardless if they do it or not. Don't let somebody alter you because of their decision. This is important. We talked about this, I'm sure, the last time. But you have to make sure that you're always feeling the same about something, whether people agree with it or not. Let me give you another example. Even about USANA. Like, let's say you're in USANA, right? And somebody comes up to you and goes, USANA's stupid, man. You're wasting your time with that. That's a pyramid. Only a few people make money. And all, you're probably one of the suckers that's, that's getting the rich guy paint his Lamborghini paint. Let's say somebody says something like that. Is that going to change the way you feel about you, son? No, because you should love it regardless, and you should love that person regardless. You should never alter your state. Okay? So this is an important feeling. Like for me, if people say, hockey, hockey's stupid, man. It's all about the NFL, you know? Hockey, you don't even watch hockey. This, we're in L.A., man. There's no snow here. Like, if people say that, guess what? I still love hockey. It doesn't matter what they say about it. I feel the same. This is the way you need to feel about your USANA business and about your goals and your dreams and everything that you do. All right, as far as money, time, health, and contribution, we talked about it last time. I'll go over it briefly. Zero to 12 months in your business, what you do right now is very important to what's going to happen next year in your business. So what you do in the first 12 months of your business will reflect on what happens in the next 12 months of your business. I can show you guys my first 12 months, I made $20,000. But the second 12 months, I made $115,000. Why? Because of this, the roots. I had been to every training I never missed. I went to every celebration, every Super Saturday, as many trainings as I could, as many meetings as I could. I went to everything that I could possibly go to. I listened to Jim Rohn as much as I could. I listened to all the personal development. I read all the books I could. This is why my second 12 months, I made $115,000. People go, oh, what happened? What, what was the turning point? I say, there was no turning point. It was this. It was my roots. See, people trying to figure out, like, give, give, me, give me the secret. Give me the secret. I'm like, there was no secret. I'm sorry. It was my roots. That's what it was. I had dug deep roots. My loyalty to USANA was there. My loyalty to health, contribution, making money, my limiting beliefs, all the personal development, all of that was here. So the second 12 months, bam, all you saw was a tree. And everybody was like, whoa, where did this guy come from? They, they couldn't see me because I was buried the first 12 months. That's why when I see people that don't show up to training, I always go, uh-oh. And then they come back a year later, like, all right, Mike, I've been in USANA for a year, and I'm ready to do this finally. I'm like. You haven't been in USANA for a year. Yeah I, I, yeah, I signed up a year ago. I know, but like you bought the seeds. You didn't even put them in the ground. And then you threw the seed in and you didn't even water it. The seed died. 
You have nothing. You're at zero. Do you guys follow me? So please keep this in mind. What you do now and for the next 12 months will show in the next six months after that. For sure. This is why we tell people. See how I'm telling people about tra I'm I'm selling you training right now. A lot of you guys sell your team, right? Come to training, come to training, come to training, come to training, right? And they don't. They're like, why? I already heard it. And, uh, and I, I know, I know. And it's just like, but you're not digging root. You're not, you're not planting some good roots. Right. Come on. All right. Limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough. Not being loved. I don't deserve. I don't know what I want. All of this stuff. These are all. These are all limiting beliefs. Another word for limiting beliefs are lies. Okay. Lies that we tell ourselves. That's what I think it is. All right, let's, let's move on. The health limiting beliefs. We all know this, right? My body type, I can't change. You know? I hear this all the time. I've had three kids. I'm not the same. I like Cindy's pictures that she posted up. Those are very inspiring. I've shared those with some people. Because I know Cindy's had two children. And she looks fantastic. Can we give Cindy a round of applause? Yes, she does. <laughs> all right. But the point is, it's... It's important to show that it's not about the kids. I'm not saying that it will make it easier. I'm just saying it's possible that this this cannot be. This is not true. Okay? It takes too much time. Health is too expensive. Number one cause of bankruptcy in this country is medical expenses. So I don't believe that health is being healthy is too expensive. I believe that being unhealthy is too expensive. Right, yeah, right. See the limiting belief? Mm -hmm. It's flipped. It's totally flipped. I don't have the energy. No, no, no. You don't have the health, my friend. You see? What else? I'm already good enough. This is another problem. This is a limiting belief that I'm facing, that I was facing. Well, I'm already good enough. You know, I'm already making money in Usana. I don't need to really lose weight or eat healthy. Nah, it's, it's wrong. I'm, I'm not thinking well. I'm only thinking for me. I'm not thinking beyond me. Being healthy is boring. Well, I tried everything. This is the biggest lie. <laughs> I don't know how too hard. I don't feel good about myself. I'm not motivated to change. Okay. We already went over this, so I'm kind of just brushing through it. These are some interesting limiting beliefs. I have a question for you guys, okay? And we asked it last time. Does money buy happiness? No. This is a question that was asked, and, and a lot of people say money doesn't buy happiness. Okay. Does money make happiness? No. All right. So some people say yes, some people say no. All right. These limiting beliefs, let me tell you something. Who has seen the movie The Machine Gun Preacher? Can I see a show of hands if anybody has seen that movie? Okay. The person who recommended this movie to me was Amy Bahajer. And I'm all, you know, I'm really into movies. So when I recommend a movie, I expect people to watch it. And if people recommend a movie to me, I'll watch it. Now, it's got to be on iTunes where I can download it and where I can watch it on the plane or I can buy it. I can't stream movies. It's a little hard. So during my, I flew probably like 30 to 40 hours. I flew like 40 hours. So I got a lot of movies in. Okay, Mr. Nobody, that was a great movie. Like a lot of movies that were suggested to me, I watched all the movies that were suggested to me. The Machine Gun Preacher was suggested. So boom, I knocked them all out. But I can't stream. Okay, so somebody has a streaming film? No. <clears throat> Walking Dead, caught up on my Walking Dead, the whole nine yards. <laughs> He's alive, guys. <laughs> Wait, who didn't see it yet? Okay. Oh. I didn't say who. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what people posted it, man, I was like, oh, Dude, yeah. man, what are you? I seriously sent them a private message. I was upset. I was like, what are you doing? Like, you couldn't hold it in? Like, you gotta go to Facebook and talk about it? Like, what the hell, man? Just so you guys know, I wanna make a point here, okay? I think he's alive. I do too. And, and the reason why, just I, I got to throw it in. If you look at the patterns, seasons one, two, three, and four, every time a key member died in the show, there was no music at the end. That's true. Right? When when Kara, when when Lori died, when when uh when um, gosh, what was the first guy? Shane. Shane. When Shane died, hey, when any when anybody key died, it was always. There was no music at the end. There was music at the end of this one. So, 
I think he's alive. <laughs> All right? I'm gonna hang on to him, dude. I, 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 no, he couldn't go down like that. He can't go. He can't go that easy. Awful. I was awful. I was in the plane crying. I was like, no. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not. I didn't say who. Okay, so no spoiler alert for you. But you gotta watch it. Catch up. Okay, so anyway, I caught up on The Walking Dead, the whole nine yards. And if you look at The Walking Dead, hey, there's a lot of leadership there, isn't there? Like, yeah. it's funny. Just looking at Rick's philosophy, like he needs to learn how to love. Does that make sense? Like he can't lose that side of himself. But at the same time, we look at the other guy and we think, oh, this guy's got to learn how to kill. But anyways, so, <laughs> all right, back to the machine gun preacher. Watching films, money doesn't make happiness. Okay, that's that's a, to me, that's a total limiting belief. And that is a total lie. And let me explain why. All right. The Machine Gun Preacher is about Sam Childress. And it's about this guy. Gerard Butler plays the role. Okay. So, ladies, if you guys want to watch this movie. <laughs> guys, if you want to watch it, it's still worth watching. Okay. <laughs> this guy's a total Harley Davidson kind of guy. And he gets out of jail. He's locked up for whatever God knows what reasons. I don't think they mentioned it. But he comes out of jail. You know, he gets straight back into trouble. He starts shooting up. Drugs. You know, alcohol, driving and drinking and driving and all types of problems. He does some other bad things that I'm not going to share. But the point is that the movie is really brutal. And I told Amy, I said, hey, is it, is it, is it brutal? Because I don't want to watch a movie that's going to like poison my brain. She goes, watch it. I was just like, so as I'm watching it, I'm like, dang, this thing is hard. But I'm like, all right, she told me I'm going to watch it all the way through now. So this guy ends up, um, he's just like a total mess, right? He just doesn't want to be with this kid. He doesn't want to be with his wife. He's just a total mess. Long story short is he finds Jesus. Okay? And when he finds Jesus, he gets baptized. And he's born again. And, you know, his, his journey is very slow at first. Like, he's active at church, and then he gets more active, and he's more active. And then they're doing mission trips, and then he feels like, okay, you know, I want to do mission trips. And then he wants to build a church, so he builds a church. And then he, wants to, he goes to do more mission trips. And when he's out there in Uganda, he goes like on this little like convoy with some of the people from Uganda and they end up in this town. That's like a, that's like a war zone. Okay. Anyways, long story short. Okay. I don't want to get too political and too religious on you guys, but the point is, this is the point. Okay. When you see what's happening, he gets to this town and there's kids sleeping outside because all their parents and their village has been burned to the ground. And I'm like, Oh, like, okay, now I'm watching the film, and I'm just feeling kind of dark here, you know, like, man, this is hard to watch. And he goes, why are they sleeping outside? He goes, they don't have anywhere to sleep. So he brings all the kids inside to where he's sleeping, and he just doesn't sleep that night, right? And then he gets a vision, because he's a contractor, and he goes, I'm going to build an orphanage, and da 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 So he, he, his business is doing well now, and he builds an orphanage. And, you know, he starts putting the kids in there. And then he realizes that kids are being abducted all the time, all over the place. So he's out there trying to get these kids and these kids are turned into sex slaves. These kids are turned into like all these disgusting things that happen and some of them are killed and murdered. And it's just, it's brutal. I mean, you're watching the film and you're like, like I couldn't even watch some scenes. I had to close my eyes. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like this is happening and it is happening. There's no doubt about it. Okay. So this is based on a true story. So it's not just some like, you know, Hollywood thing. Like it's based on true events. It was George Butler. Yeah. Yeah. So this keeps happening, right? And there's a scene in the movie where he comes back and he's like, we need to, we need more, we need more help. Like we, need, he, he's, he's running out of finances here. And he's like, we need help. Like we need money to raise and come on, come on. Like everybody help out. So he goes to business owners and he starts asking for money and he asks a business owner for five grand. The business owner gives him 150 bucks because he's like, that's all I got. You know, but he has more, but you know, that's all he's willing to give. He doesn't see it. So he's just like, oh, this guy, he's spending more money on his margaritas and you know, this and that. Like he's just like all flipping out over it. Point is that five grand could feed and shelter a hundred kids for six months. Would money buy happiness at that moment? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the problem: is that it's not the money; it's what you do with it. Yeah. Do you guys understand? Yes. So you need to get rid of that limiting belief, in my opinion. You can choose, and I respect whatever you, I will love you the same, regardless of what you think. But I choose to believe that it's not the money itself, but it's what we do with it that can make happiness, and it can make a difference. And in that situation, 
I, I told myself, you know what? I'm going to help. See, at that moment, I felt the need to contribute. So obviously, at church, I'm, I'm making more of a contribution now because I just don't feel – like I've seen people talk about the mission trips. And I'm just like, oh, let's go, let's go. And that's the end of that. No, no, no. This movie gave me a different perspective. Okay? And it was very hard to watch. And it's still going on. Okay? So my point is that does money make happiness? What you do with it could. It depends how it's used. Okay. Let me give you another example. What if, what if your mom's dying wish to go to Hawaii and she's got a week to live? Would you take her? Absolutely. Some people say, you don't have to. <laughs> Just buy her a book with the pictures. <laughs> okay? And so they say, that's enough. It's, not the, it's the thought that counts. It's not about her going. and you don't, you don't have to buy all this stuff. What if she's in a lot of pain? Would you fly her first class or would you fly her coach? I mean, it's a long flight, man. Yeah. Four and a half, five hours? To fly a coach, you know, you're sitting like that and fly first class, you get a full layout. What would you do? Dying wish, this is it. I mean, do you guys understand? Okay. It's not the money, it's what you do with it, what you okay. choose to do with it. So I don't know. This could be I could be totally wrong, and at the end, and judgment day comes, maybe I'm I've been wrong this whole time. But I feel it in my heart right now that I want to contribute. So I believe different that what we do with it can solve some problems and that's it and I'm gonna stick with that for now so I don't like selling it's not that important oh yeah try try telling people that are in that situation that it's not that important I don't know man I think we just lack perspective I think we lack perspective sometimes you know it takes money to make money money is the root of all evil I mean, some people believe that, you know, more money, more problems. Have you heard that? Yeah. Some people say that, you know, is it the money or is it you? That's the problem. Do you guys understand? Richard Branson, more money, more problems. Elon Musk, more money, more problems. It seems like more money, less problems. They seem to be solving things. I don't know. It takes too much work. It's selfish to have a lot of money. These are some limiting beliefs. There's more. But these are some limiting beliefs that unless you change these, you're going to have a hard time making a lot. Because you believe this. That's why you don't have money. Because you, somebody sold you on this plan. How about rich people are greedy? Have you heard that before? I'll give you an example. Okay, here we go. How much do you want to make per year? Give me the number. How much? 100000 That's it? 200? That's it. Okay, a million? That's it. Okay. But do you guys, why did you say a billion in the beginning? Okay. Well, first you were imagining, right? And then you started putting it together. Right. How much? A million? A billion. Okay. All right. So the whole point is people say, and people say, yeah, right, come on. You're greedy, man. Be happy with 100,000. Well, if it's only about you, then yeah, it's enough. I think 100000 is enough for, for just you. But if you want to support, not just support, but contribute in other ways, I, I don't know if it's enough. Right. See, that's where for me, like, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking beyond that. I'm thinking beyond. Like, I really, really, really want to build these world schools. I really do. I don't believe that if I, I, I I'm not going to say names, but yesterday I was with my friend. And we were talking to this person's uh, sibling, who's also a teacher. And when we're talking, very stressed out. Very stressed out. This person has their own child, and they're stressed, and they're coming home, like, all this work, and they just seem overwhelmed. I believe teachers nowadays are overworked and underpaid. And they're the ones that are helping kids. So I just don't believe this anymore. You know what I want to do? I want to go to some of the most amazing teachers that I know and say, hey, 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 I'm opening up my own school. Let's go. I want you to work for me. Here's $100,000 a year. You get five kids. Let's do this. Like, and homeschool those five kids. And let's work with this. Do you get me? Like, I just believe that that's what it is. Like, how many people, if I open up a world school, do you think people would pay to have their kids world schooled like that and to really, really get them to develop and learn? Think about how many languages a kid can learn. 
How many languages can a kid learn? As many. <laughs> as many as you teach them. Yeah. That's what the answer is. As many as you teach them. So you think I'm just going to be with my kid in America where people always say like, if you're, you know, if you speak four languages, you're polylingual, three languages, trilingual, two languages, bilingual, and one language, American. <laughs> Have you guys heard that? <laughs> Let me get the joke. <laughs> That's what you're called if you speak only one language, American. It's sad, man. We, we speak one language. That's it. English. That's it. If you speak another language, it's because your parents taught you and they're from another country and thank God they passed it on to you. Don't lose it. Don't lose the Spanish. Don't lose the Tagalog. Don't lose the Vietnamese or Cantonese or Mandarin or any other language if I miss one. But the point is, pass it on, dude. Like, when you go to other countries, like, for example, when I was in France, people spoke like three languages. English, French, and Spanish. I was like, wow. And there I am trying to be like, hey, hey, uh, do you know where the bathroom is? And they're like, yes, I do. <laughs> Speaking English in our country. Americans. <laughs> do you guys get me? It's like... <laughs> It's like somebody coming up to the street and going, you know, speaking in, 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 in Chinese to you. What are you going to do? you would be like, what are you Chinese to me for? That's the same as us going to France and speaking English. Same. Okay? So keep this in mind. But what do we need for all this stuff? Unfortunately, we do need money to do these things. That's the truth, ain't it? Yes. Some people say, well, we got to change that. When you get your own planet, rearrange the whole deal, okay? <laughs> rearrange the whole thing. But this, right now, this is the way it is, and we got to just work with what we have, right? I don't have enough time. It's too hard to stay focused. All of these things, limiting beliefs, <clears throat> time equals money, no, time equals life, procrastination, no desire, lack of imagination, it's not the right timing for me. When is the right timing? I don't know. When, when, is, when is the right time? I, I don't believe there ever is the right time. I have kids. This one. Next year, I'm telling you I see kids. Okay? It's going to happen. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. All right, guys? <laughs> but the point is, I, 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 I hear this one, and I just don't. Like, I'm not going to believe this one. Because I've seen people like Janelle. I've seen people like Cindy. I've seen people if I'm missing anybody, who do it. And they have kids and they still figure a way. Yeah. And some people say, you don't understand, Mike. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Okay? When people say, I don't understand, I say, no, you don't understand. They go, well, you don't have kids and this and that. You don't understand. I'm like, you don't understand. Here's what I do understand. I know a person who had five kids. One died. One was sick, terminal. Three others was a single mother, husband walked out with the secretary, and she was a million dollars in debt with medical bills. And she's the number one income earner of all time in Yusan. That's what you don't understand. Do I need to understand anything else? If you understand that, then nothing else really. Unless you can somehow trump that one. That's a hell of a story. But... Aren't those all reasons why she shouldn't be able to do it? But those are all reasons why she did do it. So that's what you don't understand, is what I tell people. It's true. When I met Colette Larson, that's what I felt. I felt, really? I said, nah, this is all BS. This has got to be some, like, some tale, some fairy tale they're telling us. Nope. True. True. Daughter died, man. Cystic fibrosis. Other daughter had a double lung and heart transplant. A million dollars in debt and still didn't file BK. Number one income earner in Yusana of all time. Unbelievable. That's what you don't understand, I tell them. And they go, yeah, but she's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Yusana was new back then. She didn't sign up until two years after Yusana opened. Yeah, but Yusana was much newer back then. Back then, there was no internet. No iPhones. You had to fax in the applications. 
And if you wanted to know how many points you had left and right, you had to call and wait. Your volume on the right is 5,000. Volume on the left is... That's how you check your points. Right now, how do you check your points? Go right. Oh, okay, that is. <laughs> That's how they were building it. Back then, no social network, no social media, no YouTube, no videos. PowerPoint? Not really. 94? 93, 94? Where were we? Do you guys remember the prehistoric times? Jump words. <laughs> like, we look at 90, think about it. 93. <laughs> Rodney King. That's what you think, right? <laughs> During Rodney King, what was going on? That's that's where we were. Who had an iPhone or a tablet back then? <laughs> Zach Morris. <laughs> Saved by the bell. No cell phones. Imagine when you get a flake back then. All right, I'll see you at the at the Denny's because there's no Starbucks back then. <laughs> I'll see you at IHOP at ten at ten a.m. Okay. I drive to IHOP. Show up. Where are they? You go. Quarter. Payphone. <laughs> hey, where are you? Oh, uh, he's not here. Oh, okay, he's probably on his way then. Go back to IHOP. Sleep there. Two hours later. Wake. Check home. Man, that one hurts. Nowadays, you get a text and someone flakes on you, you get hurt. At least, they, at least they told you, man. At least you didn't have to drive out <laughs> and all that other stuff. Back then, it was like, how did they do it? Yeah. How did they do it? Now, you want to call your whole team to come to a Saturday training? You send one text. Boom. Everybody has the address. Everybody has the location. One shot. Back then, hello, Jimmy? You're coming, right? Okay, the Rolodex. Hello, hello Abby? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, how did they do it? Come on. And you're telling me that she had it easier? You don't understand. Do you guys follow me on this? Mm -hmm. Back then, the essentials. The essentials. Right. Not the health pack. Those. The essentials. Those. Just the multivitamin and the mineral. A hundred dollars. <laughs> now the health pack is a little over a hundred dollars. Back then, that was a hundred dollars. Because they've been able to produce more, now they've lowered the cost of manufacturing, and now they're more efficient, so they've lowered the price. It is half the price that it was, less than half, in 1982. You don't understand. That's all I gotta say, okay? So please, don't start. Okay, it's with me. I have kids and all this other stuff. Those are all limiting beliefs. Keep telling yourself that. That ain't it. The truth is, you haven't figured it out. The truth is, you haven't developed yourself, and you choose not to develop yourself. That's the truth, okay? Contribu contribution beliefs. How can I help others when I can't help myself? Uh, anyways, I'm not going to go through all of these because it's not the right time. I will go over one, though. How do you contribute? You want to know? Smile. Be nice to people. That's how you contribute. You guys know Angel? Do you, have you guys met Angel yet? You guys met him? I remember the taco story I told? I don't know if you know the taco story. Okay. But the way I met um, Caesar, right? He's your friend, right, Caesar? Yes. Okay. The way I met Caesar, I don't even know if Caesar knows all the way. But the way I met Caesar was I was I was getting a taco at because I'm from Highland Park, okay? So I'm from the hood, man. Like <laughs> when I want to eat at night, that's where I go. I eat tacos. And this place is nice. They have mariachi music at night, and it's it's like a good scene. Well. But that day I was in my suit. I rolled up in my I8, the whole nine yards, and I'm like, yeah, what do you want to talk to? Did he tell you what happened to me that day? I don't even think he saw all the way. But this guy came up to me, okay, like this, dude, like that close to me. And he goes, F you. Like that. And I was like, in my, I was like, what? He goes, F you. I'm like, oh. I was like, all right, cool. I was like, anything else? I just want to eat my taco. And he goes, what? I was like, I just want to eat my taco, dude. Is there anything else? And he goes, no. Nah. And then I ate my taco. That was it. And then your your friend came up to me after that. I don't know if he saw that whole exchange. I think I thought that's why he came up to me, but it, I think he said it. I don't know. You got to ask him. But the point is that can you imagine? Like, 
I didn't react. I didn't snap or nothing because that's not about me. That's about that guy, man. I'm, I'm too happy. I'm in too good of a place right. to trip mm-hmm. out on stuff like that. Yeah. I just don't trip. I'm a happy man, period. Okay? So anyway, that's where I met uh, Caesar. And Caesar was asking me questions. He goes, I want to start a business, he said. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool, man. And he goes, yeah, are you a businessman? I'm like, yeah, I'm a businessman. And he goes, yeah, I want to start up a business, but I want to do like proteins and like workout stuff. And I was like, yeah, supplements. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, I can help you. I told him I can help you for sure. I was like, give me your number. And I, and I gave him some advice. I gave him some tips because he was asking me, should I go to school? And I was like, you know, if you want to go to school, go to school. I said, but go for the right reasons. I said, go because you want to learn. But I said, if you really want to do a business, go do a business. Don't just read about it. Go, go do one. I said, you can start up a business for less than $2,000. And that's where the whole concept of USANA was coming in. And anyways, I called him about GoPro. At, this is like before I was going to fly out. I was at the airport, literally at the airport. And I'm like, hey, I got a ticket to this event, I told him. And you said you want to start a business? I said, go to this event. You won't regret it. They will teach you in the next three to four days how to run a business. It's hands on. And he goes, I don't know if I could go, but he said, I, my, my friend can go. And I was like, okay. I said, yeah, it's fine. This is a $300 ticket, but I had an extra one though. So I gave it to him. It was going to go to waste. So I, I told him, I'm giving this to you. Just go. Whether he was going to do you sauna or not was irrelevant to me mm-hmm. at that point. Right. Irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Obviously, would I want people to do you sauna? Yes. And I'll show you why I choose you sauna later. But the point is I gave it to him. He said, I can't go, but my, my friend Angel can go. I spoke to Angel real quick. This is like, I'm at the gate. Like, I'm like, guys, look, here's the net. Here's Sochi. Good luck. Uh, Have fun. I got to go. Boom. And I flew out. That was the end of that. Angel bought a professional pack. He's a brand new family member. And you know what? We're waiting for good things. Give him a round of applause. That's a good story right there. That's a good story. But think about it. What a story, though. I mean, this happened after some guy told me in my face, like, mid-bite. Like, <laughs> I to go have sex with myself. <laughs> like, I was like, unbelievable. This just happened. And then that just happened. Contribution. Help. I gave Caesar the time. I said, here you go. I gave him tips. I'm contributing. When I was there, smiling at everybody. I'm having a great time. How am I contributing? I'm a positive person. That's how I contribute. I'm oozing. I'm oozing dreams. I'm trying to tell people, dream big, dream big, dream big. Someone say, why do you drive a fancy car? Because I'm trying to show you. You should Whatever it is that you want, you should have. That's it. Dream big. Don't settle. That's the last thing you want to do. I believe the opposite of happiness is settling. I really do. Because according to Tony Robbins, he says that happiness is growth and contribution. That if you're not growing and contributing – then how could you be happy? Because that's like the soul, like the, the, the basic human needs, right? Those are like the soul needs, growth and contribution. And if you focus on those two, it takes care of everything else. So are you growing and contributing? And that's when I see relationships die. I see teams die. I see businesses die. I see everything go down because people stop growing and they stop contributing. Stop, keep dreaming, man. Bring it back. That's what I see, okay? So anywho, anywho, I'm talking about it in all aspects. So empower yourself, business skills, prospecting, inviting, follow-up, closing. These are the skills, which you guys saw at GoPro. I'm not going to go into all of these, but you guys saw it. Building relationships. Leaders touch a heart before they ask for a hand. Obviously, you got to care for people. I know that seems like, oh, I do care for people. But damn, they're so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I care for people. Even people who tell me to go have sex with myself, I still care about those people too. I do. It's like, you're not going to shake me from there, man. Okay? When you see a person without a smile, give them yours. I was smiling at this thug who was in my face like this. I was smiling. I was like, I think he thought that I was, like, taunting him. But I, I wasn't taunting him. I was just like, like, yeah, hey, what's up, bro? Because this guy was not going to shake me, right? So give him a smile. If you see a person without a smile, give them yours. Start smiling. Ask the right questions. Okay, let me teach you guys something here. You guys been to GoPro, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you guys the, the, the rundown. Let's practice, okay? So practice with me here. Ask me about my job. Like, ask me questions about my job, and 
I want you to try to ask me the questions that would help lead to the conversation of USANA. Okay, let's practice because we could talk about it all day, right? But we got to be about it. All right, so go ahead. Let's say I work at um, Bank of America. Hey man, how do you like the bank? That's cool. Yeah, you get good benefits. Yeah. How are the hours? They're good. They're good. They're yeah. good. You like to pay? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, are you comfortable? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. Like, are you doing what you want? Like, what you imagine? You know, like what you planned out when you were little. Mm, no, 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 but it's just a job, dude. I'm actually going to school right now, too. Oh, okay, yeah. what are you going to school for? Um, I'm majoring in business. 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 Oh, <laughs> 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 no, no, I have it. No? no. And you're, you're in business? Yeah. Man, this is going to be every business. Every business. This is great. This is the future, man. Cool. You know, I'm actually in our marketing right now. This company named Osana. And before you say anything, I know you might think it's a pyramid or whatnot. It's what do you mean a pyramid? You know what the pyramid? No, no, tell me about the pyramid. What is that? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, oh, there's other people, and then there's the workers, and everybody thinks that it's the workers that make people the money. But the CEOs, and nobody gets it. Then the CEOs make money. But that sounds like my job. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Exactly, <laughs> man. Kusana, never mind. Nothing like that. If, you, if somebody else makes money, you make money. It's all come on, it sounds too good to be true. You gotta come and check it out, man. Um, we have How much are you making? Well, right now, man, I barely started. I'm not making that much. I'm not in a lot. Okay. Well, you know, when you're making money, dude, then let me know. And I, I want in. I want in, but I want to see you do well first. Bro, just tell me. I'm telling you. <laughs> ten, three out of the ten people I ask come. I don't want you to be the seven that don't come. Come join with me. Let's make money together. <laughs> Let me think about it, dude. I, I want to see. Show me a check first. I mean, it sounds great. It sounds too good to be true. Though. I don't believe it. I don't believe you're gonna make money. Though. You gotta come. You gotta come and see it by yourself, man. All right, all right, stop right there. Okay, give him a round of applause. Let's <laughs> hey, you know what? You went for it. Hey, that's all that matters. You went for it. All right. What questions did he ask? Was it a comfortable conversation? No. It's not a comfortable conversation all the way, right? Because it's kind of like. You like the job? Are you comfortable? Mm. I could have easily cut him off and been like, wait, why are you asking me all this, dude? Yeah. Right? Which is probably what would have happened. Like, what, 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 what is this? Man? What, what have you gotten yourself into? Are you in one of those things? I could have gone that route too, right? Like, are you in one of those things? Did you sign up for some things? Did you pay? <laughs> Did you pay money? <laughs> oh, they got you. They got you. <laughs> You're my friend, dude. Get out. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> Nobody makes money in those things. How much have you made? Nothing. Ah, see, I told you. Get out. Get out. So you guys follow me? Like, I could have gone that route too, but you know, I wanted to hear the rest of what you wanted to say. Okay? But it's about asking the right questions. Okay? All right. All right, you're, you're next. Go ahead. Ask me questions because remember, it's all about asking the right questions. You know, whoever asks the questions is leading the conversation. How is it that I seem to like get people to do it and whatever the case may be? Because I'm asking questions and I'm literally leading the conversation where I want it to go. Every time you ask a question, you give them two options. Right? They're going to go one way. And if you ask the right question, they're going to go the way you want them to go. So now they're over here. And then you ask them another question. And maybe you want them to go over here. And now they're over here. I guide them. I guide them through my question asking. That's all we got in this business. All we got is our words. If you can master the verbal jujitsu, you will be very successful in this business. But it starts with asking the right questions. All right, so go ahead, give it a shot. Same job? Same job, I work at Bank of America. All right. Um, how's it going with work? It's going well, man. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. How many hours do you work? Ah, uh, dude, they're giving me like 30 right now, bro. They're giving you 30, mm -hmm. so it's part time then? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of part time. Part time. Yeah. Um, what, what's your goal in the uh, work? Um, you know what, dude? Just to make some cash, man. Honestly, I just want to make some cash, and I don't, I don't really know. You know, I'm trying to pay some bills off, and um, you know, I want to obviously I want to get a house in the future. I got to pay for some school stuff too, stuff like that, man. Future, what do you mean, future? 
you have set of goals or do you just have ideas? I have some ideas. Yeah. But but not, not nothing really, really concrete yet. Why why do you ask them? I ask because um I have goals just as you do. I also work a part time job. I work le way less hours than you do. And my goals are actually to go beyond just the the normal as ah, <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Go. Just keep going. I, 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 I see where you're going, but go ahead. All right. To so go beyond what? What do you want to go beyond? Go beyond the CEO, because mm -hmm. I know in the business that you're in, to become a CEO will take you years. That's true. Take you. Maybe you, you might not even make it up there, because it's all competition, and not only is it competition. <clears throat> all right. Stop right there. Okay. Stop right there. You're talking, and you stopped asking questions, okay? See, you know what he said? To get to the CEO, it will take you years. Is there room for a question there? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you're trying to make a strong point, right? Yeah. Whenever you're trying to make a strong point, ask a question. Okay. How long do you think it would take you to be the CEO of B of A? I don't know, man. I mean, take a guess. Probably never. Okay. Yeah. yeah, of course. See, you're trying to make a strong point, ask a question at that moment. All right. He's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you know what? Are you new? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let you slide, okay? This once. <laughs> but you guys gotta practice with him. Okay? Alright. Alright, Alexis, let's go. Come on. Oh. Ask me questions. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. I work at Bank of America. No, I work at Cheesecake Factory. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's I work at Cheesecake Factory. And you work at Cheesecake Factory. I do. Okay? Cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> so ask me questions. You're trying to get me interested. Okay. Um. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. What's up? Good. Um, how long have you been serving here? You're doing a really good job. Um, four years. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Are you, are, you, are you trying to go into corporate or anything like that? Um, no, no, no. It's just, it's just a job. No, it's a part-time job. Are you going to school or anything? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to school. Okay. Night classes. Gotcha. Oh, you sound like a busy guy. Yeah, I have kids, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, so, as a parent, is it hard to work here? Um, no, no, it's cool, it's cool, hours. like, I, I work in the mornings, you know, and lunch, so pretty good tips, people come in during lunch, and then the kids go to school, so I pick them up afterwards, and then I drop them off with their with their mom, and then I go to school afterwards, you know, I'm just trying to get my education. Oh, you sound like a very, very uh, determined guy. Um, I was a server at one point, um, I'm always looking for quality people, are you looking for anything outside of this? Um, well, yeah, of course. That's why I'm going to school, right? I mean, I'm trying to get a better education so I can get a better job. Gosh, well, I really like your personality, and it looks like you're working hard. Um, I'm always looking for quality people to work with. Um, here's, what, would you mind adding me on Facebook? And I'll definitely let you know what I'm up to, and we can set something up. All right, cool. All right, I'll give her my number just because. <laughs> and you know what? And I'll add her on Facebook probably just because. I don't know if it's a quality lead, though. <laughs> okay. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. Is that an easy conversation to take from there to let's see a business? Right. Come on, guys. Like, come on. Prospecting, dude, is the first skill. Let me tell you what you guys are doing. You guys are asking how, what, where, when. You're missing the most important question. Wow. Why? Why? The person who got close was Kane. Kane, right? Yeah. The person who got close was Kane. He goes, what are your goals at Bank of America? That's as close as anybody got. Because at that moment, I said, well, my goals are. See, it's, it's more like my goals are why. That's that's as close as anybody got. That con When he did that, the conversation took a turn. Because now we were talking about our goals and why we do what we do. So when you ask somebody, Cheesecake Factory, so that's a, you, you obviously break ice, hey, how's it going? It's good. Hey, let me ask you a question. How long have you worked at Cheesecake Factory? The reason I'm asking is because, you know, you have a good attitude, right? Compliment. Hey, I've worked here for four years. Yeah, four years. Hey, why do you work at Cheesecake? You know? Someone's, you're, you're obviously a smart guy, you know, you work hard. Why Cheesecake? That's the question to ask. Now, you just have to become an active listener. Mm-hmm. You don't even need to say too much now. 
Who's going to do the talking now? They are. Them. Well, the reason why I work at Cheesecake, let me see. I mean, obviously I need to make some cash. I need to make some money. Or I have kids to feed. Or I have, you know what? I just got to pay some bills. I just got to, I hear you, man. See? But now you know the hot button. You know why they're working, why they're doing what they do. Let's say they work at Bank of America, corporate. Hey, why do you, why do you work at Bank of America? I mean, I have all the jobs. Why be of A? You know, I like working with people. See? I like the, the, you know, I like the interaction I have with people at Bank of America. I like people. Cool, what else do you like about it? You know, they pay me well. Money. Do you guys understand how easy it is for me? It's like fishing with dynamite for me. <laughs> it's not even fair the way I have conversations. <laughs> because I have a fifth degree black belt in conversations. <laughs> I swear to you, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. This is 10 years of practice. I, oh, 10 year anniversary completed in USANA. I yes. just hit my 10 year mark October 28, 2005 for day one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 10 years though. And I never, I never stick the beat. Of course, I'm, I'm going to be decent at this point, right? But I'm letting you know, I don't even talk too much. I do question asking. And then I become an active listener. And if you do that, you'll actually have better conversations. Mm -hmm. You'll have better conversations. You know, the, the conversation with Alexis, it seems like it's work. Like she's really digging, man. Where she would say, it, it would have been as easy as, how long have you worked at Cheesecake? About four years. Four years? Hey, you know, I don't know, Shibuya, why do you work at Cheesecake? You know, not that it's a bad thing. I mean, I know it's a good job. I work at Cheesecake. Why do you work at Cheesecake? I know what they said. I don't know. You know it's just to make money. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have a reason. Say, you want to know why I work at Cheesecake? What? Because I'm working full-time on my job so that I can work part-time on my project. I really want to work on my business project because I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be here for another four years. Do you? Okay, cool. You know what? Let's give me your number. Let's see. see, that's it right there. It's done. At that point, it's done already. Because you have a you have a commonality. You complemented, you connected, and you contacted. Those are the three C's. Complement, connect, contact. But how could you connect when you're not asking why you do something? That's when you connect with someone. Let's say I'm talking to somebody, right? I'm Cindy, and I'm talking to a person. And I go, you know, well, let's say she doesn't work. You know, why do you stay home? You know, why, why aren't you working? Well, because I have to be with my kids. I see. Is that, is that what you want to do, or if you could choose, you do something else? See, I could ask a different question. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I want to make money, but obviously I can. I don't have time. I don't have... I hear you. You know what? I feel the same way. You know, I, I stay home too. But I'll be honest. I want to make $100,000 a year from home. I don't know. Does that sound interesting to you? It's like these are questions to ask. But listen to my tone. My tone is not like <laughs> – my tone is not like, does that sound interesting to you, man? <laughs> it's not – it's just keep it real. Keep it like a real conversation. I know we get excited. But it's like <laughs> – we have to just be you. Be you. Don't change you. Just be yourself. Calm, collected. Man, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm strong, dude. I'm strong in conversation. That's how I could take a situation from a go have sex with myself while eating a taco to, <laughs> to, to a person who gave me a referral who is now a professional pack in the business and building his business and is here at Saturday training and all of that. People say, Mike, how do you do it? I'm going to say, go have a taco. Make sense? Like, <laughs> how else would you do it? I mean, I don't know. There's The secret is not the blowing of the wind, but the set of the sail. That's the secret. And I can, it doesn't matter which way the wind blows. I, I can adjust my sail accordingly. Okay? Be an active listener. Is that helpful for you guys? Yes. Can you guys go ask people why they do things instead of all those other questions you've been asking for so many years or so long? Somebody says, I work at Bank of America. Why, why be of A, man? I mean, you know, there's a lot of jobs out there. Why be of A? Man, what a great question. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? I, 
it's good pay. It's let them tell you. Not your, so do they pay you good? So do you like the hours? So do you like the benefits? So do you, See, you're digging. Let them tell you. Maybe it's none of that stuff that really appeals to them. Maybe it's none of that. Never say anything bad about people's job either. Never. I remember, oh, I remember when uh, Caesar came up to me. We were talking. He goes, hey, this is what he told me. Oh, dude, it was crazy. Ask him, okay? He, as we were hanging out, he said this. Yeah, man, I, I totally get you, man. Business. He goes, time is money. And I said, no, Caesar, time is not money. He goes, no? I said, nope. He goes, what do you mean? I was like, who owns this place? And he goes, some Chinese guy. I was like, <laughs> sounds like a Chinese guy. <laughs> and I was like, is he here? He goes, no. I said, is he making money? He goes, yeah. I said, see, time is not money for him. I said, you got to stop believing that. That's what I told him that day. He had a limiting belief. He had a limiting belief right then. I don't know if he still has that limiting belief, but I told, I, I make sure I checked them right there because the truth is time is not money. That's crazy. And, and, and he's, a, he's living that example. He needs to see it. That Chinese guy who owns that taco, I thought, I didn't know it was the Chinese guy that owned that taco place. That taco place is the bomb. <laughs> but the point is, I don't know. Obviously the Chinese guy has figured out that time is not money. Right. All right. Did that help you guys a little bit? Yes. yes. Asking the right questions. Okay, be an active listener. Authenticity and vulnerability. All right, can we go to the, to the next one? Uh, for those of you guys who haven't seen this yet, I'm sorry, actually just leave this one up for a second. Go back and put it up. For those of you guys who haven't seen this yet, we're doing an eight-week course. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen it already. We're charging for this class for people who are not in our team. All right, if you're a part of our organization, then it's going to be free for you guys. We're charging 200 or 300 bucks, I think, for this class. That's only for people who are not in our team. And the reason why is because, you know, they're going to fill in a lot of seats. So when I was in Australia, I was promoting it. And we got a lot of people to register for this already. So people have already paid for this class. It's eight weeks that you guys can get for free. Okay? So follow us with this class. And all we're going to be teaching over the next eight weeks is this. These are the ranks that you want to be growing to. This is the income. This is the way you build the mindset for that income. So if you're brand new right now, like if you're brand new, what should you be reading, listening to, and all that? This. You want to know how much it costs me to make a million dollars? Five bucks. The Jim Rohn CD that I heard. I'll be honest. That CD made me over a million dollars. And it cost me five dollars. When that CD was given to me, I was really, really struggling in USANA. And it was like, here, listen to this. And I was like, all right. And I popped it in, right? And I heard it, and I was like, wow, that was pretty good. And I told my upline, I was like, hey, that was really good, thanks. He goes, all right, tell me what you learned. I was like, he said something about, he goes, you don't know it well enough. He goes, learn it, master it. See, here's the interesting thing about USANA. USANA is easy to do, but difficult to master. Do you guys follow me on this? It's easy to do, but difficult to master. How hard is it to listen to a CD? How, how, how hard is it, really? Not hard. Does it take any effort? It takes effort, okay? But how much effort? <clears throat> Easy. But it's hard to master that CD. So what I'm telling you right now is you need to master this uh, this audio. Building your network marketing business by Jim Rohn. Yes? How many times have you listened to that audio? I mean, I can recite it to you. Word for word. I know that sounds crazy, but it's got, I don't know, it's got to be over 100 times for sure. Word for word, okay? I'm not joking you. If you want to test me on this, but word for word, like a song, the whole way through. That's how many times I've listened to it. You still listen to it today? Yeah. Every now and then, I'll pop it in. Why? Because it hits me different. Like, I'll give you guys an example of how it hits me. Um, you know, I've, I've had my own limiting beliefs, right, that I've been dealing with. Like, what are my limiting beliefs? I'll tell you one. This is a limiting belief. Anyone can change. I don't believe that anymore. I don't. I used to believe it for a long time. I actually believed it for 10 years. And I was listening to Jim Rohn, and I stopped believing it. 
I stopped like this. I, like, like a ton of bricks hit me. After I've heard the audio, I know it forward and backwards, and I don't believe that anymore. So if you tell me anyone can change, I'm like, nope, you're wrong. Stop believing that. I will tell you. I'll be the first one to tell you. Stop believing that. I believed that for 10 years. So what's the truth? Chimron says, anybody can change. Doesn't matter. Anybody who wishes to change, they can do it. See, I missed that part. Anybody who wishes to change can change. That's the truth. Anybody who wants to change can change. That's the truth. And I applied that other philosophy that anybody can change in my relationship, in my family, in my business. And I'll tell you this, it created a lot of heartache. A lot of heartache. So how do you know if somebody wants to change? Here's how you know. What they say and what they do. Because what you want shows up in your words, but what you expect shows up in your actions. So if you want to change, it's not enough. If you expect to change, that's enough. So if you say, I want to be successful, I want to be successful, I want to be successful. Like, Angel and I will have a conversation later. But if Caesar says he wants to own a business, I don't believe him. I don't believe him. You want a business, but you keep working at this taco place? Come on, bro. You don't want a business. You, don't, you want a business. You don't expect to have one, though. Do you? And you're like, I do. Then why do you keep working at the taco place? I don't get it. Well, I have to work there for now. What steps have you taken to own a business? Show me. Uh, see? Show me, what you, show me what you got already. Show me the plan already. I want to see it. Well, I haven't started working on it. See, you don't expect it because your actions are not dictating that. So I am not going to waste time with somebody who does not want and expect change. So I'm very clear now. I'm clearly defined now. If you want and expect change, then we can work together. If you don't want and expect change. Now, some people need to be guided though, right? You need to guide them. So tell them like, hey, maybe, maybe they're not clearly defined. So I'm willing to work with them a little bit. But you can tell after... After eight weeks, mm, before, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go eight weeks, man. I would go years working with somebody, years and years working with somebody because I felt anyone can change, anyone, anyone, anyone. No, anyone who wants to change can change. See, that's a limiting belief that I had to deal with. And so we say, but Mike, that's what made you who you are, right? No, it does. And I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm giving up on everyone. I'm just saying I'm giving everybody eight weeks now. And within those eight weeks, you will show me that you want and expect to change. So I'll give it everything for eight weeks. But after that, I'll know. You don't, and I'll be honest. You know what? You don't want or expect to change. And that's cool. And that's it. I can move on. My God. I'm free. I'm free. Because it, it literally blocked me in for a lot. Like a lot, a long time, I stayed stuck with a lot of people going, why don't they, why don't they, you see? And it created a lot of heartache. So for me, I'm, I feel like we need to understand this. You need to understand this. My brother, how many years did I fight with my brother about this? Years. And now, he came with me to Australia, right? Does he want to change? I believe he wants to change now. Now, does he expect to change? We'll see. I didn't invite him to this training. I invited him to the training tomorrow with Trish because we'll all be working together. So he'll, if he doesn't show up tomorrow, though, what do you think I'm going to say? Hey, bro, I love you, okay? You want change, but you don't expect it. This is your first. The first thing that you're showing me that shows me that you don't expect change. I'm just letting you know, okay? See, and with my own brother, I'll do it. It's cool. I, I, hey, man, it's cool. If, you don't, if you're not ready for change, I love you the same. Don't trip. But I need to know if you want and expect change. Do you guys get me? Don't think I'm going to treat people like lousy. No, I'm going to love everybody the same. I, I care about people the same. But I just need to know for me to help me get through things now. That it's not everybody. It's the people that want to change can change. Did you guys already, how many of you guys already knew that, though? You already knew that. You have to want to change in order to change, right? 
Have you guys ever tried to change somebody before? Yeah. Jim Rohn says, right? I used to try to change people. You know, I said, I'll make them successful if it kills me. I almost died. No, you can't do that. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Even in growth, like when I'm, when I'm talking to a Ruby director, let's say, for example, like Abby, and I go, okay, do you want to be Emerald? Do you expect to be Emerald? Okay. So we'll see. Make sense? Like, we'll see. Because I know, of course, you want to be, but do you expect to be? What do your actions show? And we'll work on it. See, it's like everywhere now. I can, I, I'm free. I feel like more productive. I feel happier. I'm like, I'm good. I'm in a better space. Okay. So now I'll look at you without this frustration. I'll look at you with clarity and I'm just calm because I already know. Like, I feel like I know what's going on. All right. So this is what you want right here. Listen to it over and over and over. A building your marketing business. Five dollars. Actually, on iTunes, it's a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> Man, if you don't listen to that audio, see, on YouTube. who who wants to make at least a hundred dollars a week? At least, that's not making it already, right? You will not make a hundred dollars a week if you don't master this. So the next time I speak to everybody here, I'll say, "Tell me what Jim Rohn says in the first five minutes." You go, "Uh, he says something like, nope." <laughs> You want change, but you don't expect it. How many times have you listened to it since we spoke? I haven't had time. There you go with your limiting beliefs again. I don't have time. Mike, I can't stay focused. There you go with limiting belief number two. I can't stay focused. Mike, it's because I have kids. There you go with limiting belief number three, because you have kids. What else? Do you see? My guy to have the money. Limiting belief number four, a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> what else? Do you guys hear me? Like I'm so clear now. It's like the truth teller. <laughs> like the truth will set you free, my friends. Like it's it's like that almost. Like when I hang out with people, like my my reading ability is like damn. I was hanging out with people in Australia, and I said, all right, tell me what's going on. And they're like, this, this, this. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, stop. Let me guess. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and this is happening. And they're like, how'd you know? I'm like, I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, how do you? They're like, whoa, this is scary. And I'm like, and this is happening in your life too. I bet you this, 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 this. And they're like, this girl said, she, she's 51 years old. She said, you have rocked my world completely in one day. 51 years old, an executive. She's really successful, very smart woman. She goes, you have rocked my world in one day. She goes, how could you know that much about me without even knowing me? And I said, because I've been, if there's one thing I do know is people. I've spent 10 years talking to people, dealing with people. That's it. That's all I do. Build relationships, have conversations, understand people. You know, <clears throat> my friend that went to Tony Robbins that had the breakthrough, as they were telling me all their breakthroughs, right, I was just like, I told you this. Like, I'm thinking, like, I've told you this before. And they're like, no, but he touched me. <laughs> and this is what I told them. I said, no, you listened. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. You listened. Because this person went in with, like, this fresh perspective of, like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to see what the heck happens. Like, that openness is when you finally receive information. This person was at a crossroads, and that's where you're like at rock bottom, like boom, now you're ready to hear it. It's funny because it's until you're e – that's why I'm writing my book, guys. That's why I feel like my book will be very, very important. It's when your ego is there that you don't even listen at the presentations. Your ego is telling you like, oh, I don't know this. I already know this. I don't need to know this. I got this. And yeah, whatever. Yeah, Mike, whatever. Like that ego, man, it's robbing you the whole time. Okay? So – you got to put it aside so you can actually listen. You're already here. Jeez, you already showed up, you know? All righty. Let's go back, yeah? Can you go to the other one? I'm going to show you guys how to do a health and freedom. The, the back part, because a lot of you guys have been doing the health and freedoms, right? Mm -hmm. There's the health side, which is industry, company, products. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over the compensation plan. All right. I'm just going to share with you how I'm going over it. Feel free to go over it however you want. My suggestion is to pay attention here 
because this is the way that it's working for me, and this is how we got a lot of sign ups out there. Okay, start with your story. So I'll tell you guys my story. All right, my name is Mike Kayahas. I'm 53 <laughs> years old. Prior to working in USANA, there's not too much to say about me. You know, I was uh, I, I was born and raised in Highland Park. You know, after I got out of high school, I went to college. I went to UC San Diego. As you can see, I was very focused in college. I didn't party or anything, as you guys can see in this photo. Okay, <laughs> people laugh, whatever. And I tell people, actually, I'm joking. My first quarter, my GPA and my blood alcohol were the same, 1.0. <laughs> so I make a joke. Now, why do I make that joke? Because then I'm likable. Okay? So <clears throat> when you make people laugh, you are automatically likable. So just so you know why I joke around, it's because you're likable. But I say, but I got my act together. I obviously finished school, made my parents proud. This is a big moment for us. Okay? There's my mom and my dad. Without them, you know, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Okay, so my parents always told me, do well in school. I've never been a really smart guy, but I work really hard at everything that I do. And then I ask a question. How many of you guys know people who never study and get good grades? I hate those people. <laughs> and that's another way to add humor. And that's also a way that I do this. I show that I'm not intelligent. And you want to know why I say that? Not to be modest. Because I really don't think that I'm a smart guy. Because I, I'm not naturally smart. And I don't think anybody here... Well, unless you're like you're a genius of some kind that I'm unaware of, I don't think anybody's really naturally smart. I just think people work hard at things and they get better at things. So I'm not putting myself below anybody or above anybody. I'm just telling it like it is. All of you guys here that are good at something, you're good at it because you've been practicing it, right? Yes. Don't tell me you're just out of you were born and it's like you got the ba basketball and you freaking just threw it and it went in the hoop. You're like, what the? I didn't like to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. So that's why I use that part in my presentation because I'm trying to program people that it's not about smarts because I don't believe it's about smarts. Do you see the psychology in my presentation? That's why I say that part. And then I go into, I say, this is my first car. Why? Because I got to show where I came from. And I say, and I, and, and I say, this is my first car. And this is where I was back in, you know, when I was 23 years old, I was driving a 1988 Mitsubishi Galant. I say it was a Rolls Canardly edition. It rolls down one hill and can hardly make it up the next. Okay? <laughs> so at this point, I've made people laugh about three times. So I'm pretty likable at this point. Like I'm almost like a sweetheart at this point. Like people are thinking, I like this guy. Now they're listening. Okay. Now, I when I use jokes, how do I deliver my humor though? It's not like a comedian, like like a like a clown. There's funny and there's foley. Don't be foley. Like don't be silly. Like you're like you're. Like you're performing. Like right. I, I'm not a performer up here. Right. I'm just telling a story and I'm adding humor to my story. I'm adding, you know, one punchline every couple of minutes because, you know, I want to make sure that I'm lightening the mood. Remember, there's some people that come in like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the ones that come in like that and I say a couple of jokes, they're like, <laughs> that's what happens okay that's what happens so this is the psychology of 10 years of experience and observance and all, all this kind of stuff so at this point and I say now let me tell you why I got started in USANA see this girl right here this girl completely changed my life and the reason why is because and I can't tell you why people come into your life at the moment that they do but I, I fell in love with this girl and I started dating her and I promised her all these things I promised her that I was going to take her around the world I was going to take her to Paris to Egypt to New York, I mean, just for starters, right? And she bought into all of that. How many of you guys know people, there's a question, how many of you guys know people who make big promises like that and don't deliver? Well, that was me. I was the guy that promised the world to this gal and I never delivered. And it got to the point where she got fed up and she said, you know what, I don't want to be with you anymore because you never come through with what you say. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, you never took me to Paris or Egypt or New York. And I was like, I took you to Las Vegas. It was all there. <laughs> so now I'm very, very, very funny. And now people are thinking, oh, that's kind of cute. You know, yeah, Vegas. My boyfriend took me there too. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute. He's cheap. Okay. So all of these things are happening. People are relating with the story. Like there's a lot going on in this. In that joke, there's actually a lot, a lot going on in people's heads. Half the crowd is thinking that's funny. Half the crowd is thinking that's funny, but it's true. And then other crowd is thinking, Wait a minute. Like there's a lot going on, right? So I'm literally messing with people. Do you guys understand? Like I'm literally, I, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with your head, okay? Which is true. I'm shaking you up. But I'm being vulnerable too, though. I'm being authentic. I'm being vulnerable. 
I'm making, I'm pointing fun at myself, which is what makes Eminem the rapper so powerful. Why is he so powerful? Because you can't make fun of the guy, because he already makes fun of himself. So anybody who's trying to talk smack about me, what, what could you say about me that I haven't already said? Do you see? This is authentic and vulnerability. Man, are you guys learning from this? This is like the speaker training that you never have, okay? So I say, so what happened to me during this time? I decided to start looking for opportunity. And I started thinking, okay, I need to make more money. Like, I got to work harder. So I started working hard at my job. I worked about 73 hours a week working for a plumbing electrical company. And when I was working at this plumbing electrical company, I'm telling you, like, I worked myself to the ground. I worked to the point where my eye started doing this. Has anybody's eye ever done this before? I'm relating to more people. And letting them know that if your eye is doing that, you're stressed. I'm messing with your head again. Don't tell me that your eye does this and you're okay. Don't tell me that you're happy and your eye is doing that. <laughs> That's BS. Now, I don't say all of that. Right? I don't, I don't go into it like that. I just say, how many of you guys have ever had your eye do this? Yeah? Yeah, well, that, I was working myself to the ground. See? I don't insult anybody. I'm just insulting myself, but I'm including you. If your eye does that. And I think we've all been there, right? Wait, can I see a show of hands? How many people actually have felt that? That means you're stressed. <laughs> There's no Buddhist that has that. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> Go find a monk in Tibet and be like, does that happen? They'll be like, they'll look at you like, hmm? <laughs> no, it does not happen to them. There's no stress, man. It's chill. Chill. You want to know when the last time I did that? I don't remember. It doesn't do that anymore. I actually don't feel that anymore. You know what that shows? That I'm stress-free. That's what it shows. Because whenever I feel like I'm getting stressed, you know what I do? I take a nap. <laughs> like, I'm serious. If I ever feel like I'm going to stress, I'm just like, hey, you know what? I need to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that at your job, though? Like, you know, like, hey, boss. Ten-minute nap, okay? <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. Okay, so do you guys see my ID? Like, I'm connecting with people. Authentic, vulnerable. I'm totally connecting. This is telling your story. So I say, I started looking for opportunity. I started working hard, though. I worked myself 73 hours a week to, to provide for this woman because I wanted to show her that I was serious. But here's what I learned. I learned that no matter how hard I worked, I would never, ever become successful. Why? Because the harder I worked, the wealthier my boss got. Let me show you an example of that. Here's an email from my old company. Look, March 4th, 2005. This is before I signed up in USANA. And it's an email that was sent to all the employees at my company. And it talked about this. It said, our company has a lot of great minds, and we want to compensate them for their ideas. One of our employees had an idea to save the company $24,000 a year. He was not told to do so, but he took it upon himself. The, company's, the, the money that's saved will be, helped, uh, will be used to better the company. We want to congratulate Michael Cajas for his great idea. He was awarded $100 for his contribution. <laughs> Let there be more of these great ideas. I saved the company $24,000 a year with one idea. It was recognized and acknowledged, and I got $100. How many of you guys think that's fair? Some of you guys say, you should be thankful. And I'm like, you know what, I was. I called my girlfriend and I said, hey, we're going to dinner tonight. On me, I got a bonus. I was so excited. But at the same time, I realized then that I would never be successful no matter how hard I worked. And that's when Yusana came into my life. That's my story. Do you guys see? Yeah. When I, and then I continue, right? When I was invited to USANA, I came down very skeptical. Why? Because I had seen things like this before. I'm relating. I'm relating to the audience. How many of you guys have seen something like this before USANA? Make sure you mention that. Make sure you mention that. Say, some of you guys have tried something else before, right? Then make sure you mention that. You know, I tried something like this before and I lost money. Or I didn't make it, it didn't work for me. So I was, obviously I already had a preconceived notion. Mention that. That's powerful. Because you're relating to a lot of people. And then, I, so I say, I came to the presentation, I was very skeptical, I had my arms crossed, my legs crossed, and my eyes crossed, like some of you guys. And at that point, I made them laugh enough times, where even though I've insulted them, they already kind of embraced me. Do you follow me? Yes. If I would have said that first, they would have been like, this guy is like a jerk. But because I said it later, they were like, piece of paper. See? I'm messing with them, I'm going like this. <laughs> Like I'm shaking everyone, but I got everyone's attention now Within three minutes. I have everybody's attention like this You're here. You're mine That's what you want to do with your story And some of you guys say well, my story is not like yours Mike. It doesn't have to be like mine 
Your story is amazing in of its own. What's so amazing about a guy from Highland Park that drove a Mitsubishi Galant that had a girlfriend that told her he was going to take her to see the world? I made my story interesting. But it's true, though. My story is true. Don't lie. Don't create a bunch of fairy tales. Ask Liz if that's true or not. You guys, obviously, some of you guys know Liz. Ask her if it's true or if it's not true. Okay? So she's still around. So you guys can see her and examine, cross-reference cross some of this stuff. The email's there. It's time-stamped. So my story is true. The Gallant, well, it's, it, it, it went to, like, put, and it crushed it. So that car's gone. That's my story. And then I, I, I always end it, well, well, you guys didn't come to listen to my life story, right? But I love hearing it. So I just want to bore you with it. So I use that. That's from Jim Rohn. Okay, Jim Rohn says it. You no, know, that's my life story, and I just thought I'd bore you with it. And I liked when he said that, and I was like, you know, I'm going to take that. Okay? So I use that from Jim Rohn. Okay, so now let's talk about the business of the 21st century. But now that I've got my story out, I've got your attention, now it's time to deliver info. See, I used to think that being successful was making a lot of money. But now I've learned that success is more than just that. This is what I feel. Notice how I'm saying, this is what I feel. This is what I believe. I don't say, this is what it is. Because when you say things like that, people will challenge you. So never speak, speak in absolutes. Speak like that. Now I believe that health, time, money, and helping others, contributing, that is my definition of success now. And I give a quick example. Let's say I'm healthy, I have time, and I have money, but I'm selling cigarettes. No offense if anybody does that. But for me, personally, I wouldn't consider that successful. Let me give you guys another example. What if I have a lot of money, but I have no time, and my health is struggling? Am I successful? No. So I feel like we need a balance. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. yes. Next. See? So the original plan was go to school, get a degree, get, get good grades. I'm sorry, go to school, get good grades, get a degree, get a job, save your money, and retire. That's the plan that a lot of people followed, and that's a great plan. See, I'm not going to talk. So if you're in school, stay in school and finish. But I don't believe that that's the way a lot of people are seeing success now. Let me show you the new way of doing it. Now we see people working on themselves, building skills, starting up a business, Creating income, turning it into more assets, and then having total financial freedom. Let me give you some examples. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook. Did he go to school, graduate, get a job? Did he follow that? No. No. He went to school, dropped out, started Facebook, and now we all know where he is at, right? What about the CEO of Uber? What about the CEO of Pinterest? What about Snapchat? What about Airbnb? What about Google? What about YouTube? What about, and, and I can keep going. The point is, people seem to be following a different path now. Yeah. It's not the traditional way. It seems like people are going to school, getting skills, but as soon as they do, whether they graduate, they're starting business. Like people are starting up a, an idea now. They're starting up a business of some kind. That's the new way of building success. Next. So, do you have a freedom system? Do you have a business already like that? And my, my question is this. If you don't have one, why not? Now, for me, I didn't have one. So, that's why USANA appealed to me. Because I thought, okay, well, I don't have one right now. Let me see what this one's all about. Follow me? If you already have a way to make money, create time freedom, help others, and be healthy, then great. That's awesome that you have that already. So just hear ours so you can learn as well. But if you don't have one, then you should really pay attention. Next. Do you guys see how I'm doing that? I'm respecting everybody. Why? Because I want them to respect me. Do you guys understand this? Yes. I respect your thoughts. Respect mine. That's what I'm saying with my words. Do you guys understand? If I didn't say that, if I said, we have the best business and, you know, you guys have to do this. And if I started talking like that, 
what would happen? People say, no, I got my own thing going, bro. I'm good. You do you, I'll do me. No, I see, I don't want I don't want that. I want it to be where we're we're communicating. Okay? So before I get into everything, let's talk about time first, because I think that time is very important. Health is the most important, but we've already talked about health. So let's talk about the second most important thing now, time. We only have a limited amount of time on this earth. So let me show you. Most people work 40 hours a week for 40 years of their life to retire with 40% of their income. So if you do that, you're going to work for about 80,000 hours. And there's no real way around this if you're just working every day, day in and day out. If you have a freedom system of some kind, you can work with 20 people in your company. So you hire 20 people to work for you, or you get 20 people in your company. You have them working 20 hours a week for four years. That also equals 80,000 hours. See, that's you're getting paid on 80,000 hours worth of effort. And here you're getting paid on 80,000 hours worth of effort. The only difference is here you did all the work. And here it was a collective effort. Do you guys see the difference? Yes. This is called leverage. Spend time explaining that. Just the way I explained it right now. Did I explain it pretty simple? Yes. People go, oh, that's interesting. So where are you in your life right now? Some of you guys are 18 to 25. If that's you, you're in the beginning of your life. You're just learning, building skills. If you're 26 to 35, though, and you still haven't started working on your freedom project yet, then you really need to start paying attention because people are already retiring by this age. People are retiring by this age right now. How about 36 to 45? A lot of people at that age have kids. So now time is more important than money for them, right? 46 to 55, this is where retirement, money becomes important again. And at 56 to 65, you should be thinking retirement, you should be prepared. You should be preparing things for your grandchildren already, like if you have a family, right? Nobody should work past 65. So if you're working past 65, I'm sorry, but in my opinion, nobody should work past 65. When I go to Walmart and I see the person checking the receipts, I always see older people there and it breaks my heart because I think, why are they there? Do they want to be there or do they have to be there? Do you see how I do that? I say, I don't want my parents to be there. How many of you guys would retire your parents if you could? What am I doing there? I'm creating desire. I'm creating desire because I'm having you imagining it. Make sense? I'm having you imagine it. This is all like psychological, but just stay with me, okay? So now let me talk about the most important slide of tonight. This is the most important slide of the evening. If you're here, please pay attention to this because this information is actually life-changing when you understand it. There's four places to be in the world of business. That's it. If you're not in the world of business, like if you're unemployed, then you don't fall into this. But when you decide to get employed, you're going to fall into this. So what are the four? Number one is employee. That means that you have a job. 100% of your income is based off of you. So in this scenario, time equals money. And whatever your boss thinks you're worth equals money. That's where I was in the very beginning. Self-employed are people who now don't want a boss. They want to do things on their own. I'll give you an example, like a personal trainer. Let's say you work at 24-hour fitness and they're paying you. And now you say, forget it. I don't want to work at 24-hour fitness anymore. I'm going to be a personal trainer on my own. You think that you've become a business owner now. No, you're self-employed. Because now if you're training people, you're making money. And if you're not training people, you don't make money. So guess what? Time still equals money. Let's say you take it a step further. And now you start to hire a lot of people. And as you start to hire people, you start to hire and train personal trainers. Right now you have a business because those personal trainers are going to go out there and work and get customers and you're going to get a percentage of that. How many of you think that sounds pretty cool, right? Okay. That's what we all should want. See what I'm doing? I'm getting everyone to agree with me and I'm using an example of what personal trainer. Why? Cause it's so common nowadays. So I use that example and I say the only problem here in this business is if you have personal trainers that are working for you, a lot of them eventually want to break away and do it on their own. So you're losing people because they're not going to work as hard for you as you work because they don't have the same to gain. 
So this here though, people equal money. And that's good. The more trainers you have, the more money you make. Now, why is it okay for you to make money off of those trainers? Because you're paying them, and the more you pay them, the more you make. Right? The more they work, the more you make. This is a good, good, good life right here. Here you have leverage. Time no longer equals money. So now you can make time and you can make money. You can do both. That's what you should want. And eventually you can be an investor. An investor, it's not even about time. And it's not even about anything else, about people. It's all about money making money now. You put money in and you can turn it into money. Now being an investor sounds great, but I'm letting you know right now, you have to know what you're doing. And you need money to make money. That's the only challenge with being an investor. So today, you're going to learn how to be a business owner with very low capital. You don't need a lot to start. That's what we're going to teach you guys today. Next. So when you're picking a business, what type of business should you pick? See, that's the question. Yes. There's a lot of businesses to choose from. And don't get me wrong. I respect whatever you guys like. But let's evaluate how to choose one. And this is the way you can choose it. This is a good way. First, a huge expanding market. Make sure that whatever business you do, it's something that's growing. Like, let me give you an example. If you're selling CDs, is that a good business to sell right now? How many of you guys think the CD will be gone in the next 10 years? Okay. So don't sell CDs because that's going to be gone. Make sure that it's a huge expanding market. Let's talk about it. We're actually in three. Number one is health. Is health a huge expanding market? Mm -hmm. Here's what's interesting. If you don't believe that, how many gyms are opening? How many vegans do we see this year versus last year? How many vegetarians this year versus last year? Here's another interesting fact. This is a fact, by the way. This year was the first year that there were more McDonald's that closed than McDonald's that opened. Before, we used to say McDonald's is a foolproof system. This was the first year that more closed than more opened. Is fast food an expanding business? It seems like people are getting it now. Health is an expanding business. Yeah. <coughs> are you guys with me still? Yes. yes. What's another industry we're in? Home-based businesses. <coughs> Excuse me. In home-based businesses, are people starting more home-based businesses now or less? Wow. It seems like more people want to work from home now. So that's another expanding market. Next, online. Online businesses and network marketing. Seems like that's happening. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Can I get some water? I don't know. Somebody help me out. <coughs> this is like uh, too many hours of talking here. That's the only challenge. All right. So did I explain that already? Yeah. Next is unique consumable product. The person who did the first half of the presentation should have covered that. Why we're unique. We manufacture our own product. We personalize products. Thank you. I took you like a shot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just took me back a little bit. All right. So unique is a little product. But that's what makes you sound unique, right? That we manufacture and that we're personalized. Okay, so maybe the person who did the first half of the presentation should have covered that. But now maybe you can recap it. What makes us unique, guys? Manufacturing. What makes us unique, guys? Personalization. Maybe you can recap it right there. That's what I did when I was in Australia. The first speaker nailed it. Trish, or the first speaker, nailed it. And I just recapped it. Okay. <clears throat> Next is leverage. We already talked about that. Make sure that you can create leverage. Like you can get people to work under you. If you can't get leverage, you'll always have money, but you won't have time. And next is timing. As far as timing goes, is it the right timing to do USANA? Well, let's talk about it. All right. That's where you show the stock market. That's where you show what's happening with USANA right now. I'm not going to go over it. You guys already know what that looks like, right? I show how the stock has tripled in the last year. I show how our annual sales have grown $60 million average year after year. I show that. And I'd say, is it the right timing right now? USANA is growing really fast. And we're expanding into other countries too. So I let people know that we're still growing. Okay? You guys need to believe that. We are still growing. And right now the U.S. is growing again, which is nice. 
Okay, currently right now, I'm sitting as the number two grower in the world, which is kind of cool. And there's a lot of things happening right now. So believe me, I'm, I'm on, man. And I want you guys to, like, let's do this. Come on, let's get people growing again. Let's get Abby and Arable, Emerald and Diamond. Let's do it. Why not? By convention. Why not? I want to see Janelle. I want to see all the golds go ruby. I want to see all the silvers go gold. I want to see this happening. But let's, let's, let's get that imagination going again. Okay, we got to imagine ourselves at convention, like rolling deep, diamonds, like boom. Like it, it's, it's got to be a whole, other, a whole other message. Okay? So after I show the whole stock market thing, then I go into social networking. So people say, Mike, this sounds great, but I don't know anybody. Isn't that one of the excuses? Mike, I don't know anybody. I say, how many of you guys are on social networks? Everybody should raise their hand, right? And I say, okay, that's the future. See, if you're on Facebook, you have access to a billion people. A billion. That's, that's the power you have in your fingertips with your phone. You're on Pinterest, Twitter, Insta, right? Google Plus, uh, LinkedIn. You have access to billions of people. So how could you not know anybody? See, what's cool about our business is that we're international business. You could be in business in 19 countries tonight. Do you guys see how I'm selling it? It's true though, yeah. right? So remember all of this. <clears throat> this is the future. Working any place, anytime, anywhere. That's the future. Your business, your life, your way. That's what's going to happen. And it's already happening. See, that's what's cool is that some of you guys can actually say that story already, right? Like Abby can say like, yeah, you know, I was traveling with my family over here. My wife and I were there. Arable can say my wife and I went here on vacation. And while we were there, we were working. And da, 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 da. Some of you guys went to Vegas for GoPro. Say we're at GoPro. We're in Vegas, but we're still working. You know, we went to New York, but we're still working. See? That's how it is, guys. You can travel and work simultaneous. It doesn't have to be I travel and then I work. Like it's both at the same time. That's crazy. <clears throat> so how does it work? There's only three steps. First, use it. Then feel it. Then share it. Those are the steps to working in the business. It's the way you do everything else. How many of you guys recommend movies? How many of you guys recommend restaurants? You recommend good books? <coughs> well, first, before you recommend it, what do you do? You enjoy it, and you use it, whatever it is that you're talking about, right? So don't skip to here. A lot of people sign up in USANA, and they go straight to sharing it before ever using it first. So we need you to use the products first and feel the benefits. And then you can begin sharing it. Do you guys see how we do that? Yes. This is now getting them to want to buy the products. They're like, well, you know, yeah, yeah, okay, I want to use it. I want to use it. Perfect. So once you, if you want to use it, all you have to do is choose the product package and become a USANA team member. That's how you start to use the products. Pick the product package that works best for your budget. So talk to the person that brought you here. That's what I said over in Australia. Could we change it here? We could. But I don't know. It worked. Everybody just sold. Okay, well, these are the packages. And everybody was programmed already to kind of just show the packages. So choose a product package that fits your budget and then become a USANA team member. That's it. See, I'm, I want to make it simple like that. I don't want people to be like, I don't get it. I want people to be like, I get the concept. Right? All right. So the six ways to earn money. Retail sales is one. As soon as you buy your business and you choose your product package, you're going to get a website. That website has a URL. Anytime somebody clicks on that URL and buys product, it gets shipped directly to them. They get billed directly and you get paid for that. So I'll give you guys an example. Somebody ordered products on my website yesterday. They bought 10 shakes. Okay. I bought, I got paid about 40 bucks just for that one order. Okay. And that was shipped to another state. So I'm letting you guys know that's pretty cool, right? I wasn't even aware that that person was buying on my website. How many of you guys like to get paid when, when you're not even aware? Right? Okay, cool. Well, it happens. But you gotta promote your website. This is why you need to use the product. And you need to attack, attach your URL 
to your Instagram, to your every, everything that you do, text messages you send out, attach it. It's got to be part of you, your business. You're promoting your, yourself. You're promoting your business. And you can promote that in all 19 countries, which is amazing. See, now you can say, when people ask you, what do you do for a living? Somebody asks you, so Kane, what do you do for a living? You can answer, I run an international health business. You're like, dang, bro, how'd you get so sexy? Okay? <laughs> See, I got to bring humor back, right? <clears throat> but it's true, though, don't you? I run an international health business. How did you do that? I teamed up with a company called USANA that manufactures products in Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow, that's cool. See, that's how I answer the question. When people ask you, what do you do, what do you say? I own my own business. Yeah, what kind of business? Vitamins? Oh. Oh, I run an international health business. What, what kind of business is it? Well, I teamed up with a company that manufactures products called USANA in Salt Lake City, Utah. And from there, it's where they, we, they make everything. And I just promote my website and I'm able to sell products in 19 countries. How's it going? Not bad. You follow me? And you can kind of go from there. Or you can say it's challenging. The key is to get people to see it. You know? That's where, you, that's where your conversation comes in. That's where you talk about what you're doing. When people ask me how's it going, I say, bro, it's going amazing. What can I say, man? I have over a thousand customers that are buying the products in several different countries. I don't even know all my customers, which is not a bad thing. I just know that they're happy because they keep ordering every single month. I keep getting paid every single month for this. I mean, that's what I say now. But what did I say back then? I was like, well, right now my goal is to get 400 customers. And once I get 400 customers to consume at least two or three products, I'll be able to be financially free. Because now I'll make $100,000 a year whether I work or not. That's what I'm focusing on. I got to get 400 customers. Do you guys understand? So my, my story has changed over the years because my, my, my life has changed over the years. So retail sales. So how, I'm sorry. I want to go back to how I explained this. Retail sales. Just explain retail sales. Now, this part right here, weekly commissions, when you talk about weekly commissions, that's where I talk about the 400 customers. I'd say weekly commissions, you can start recruiting a team of people, and you can actually get team members under you. This is where we have the concept of leverage. Remember the, the example I gave of the personal trainers? Well, now you can do that. You can get 20 personal trainers under you who are not just doing personal training, because you don't make money off of that. But if they're recommending products to their clients, you can get money off of that. Okay, so this is actually a pretty cool concept. If this is you, if you get 400 customers to consume this, you'll make $100,000 a year. I know what you guys are thinking. How do I get 400? Well, it's not easy to get 400. But how many of you guys have four friends? And then I say, not everybody. Well, when you die, you need four people to carry you. Okay, so I joke around about that. Okay? But, but I say that just to kind of lighten everybody up again because it's kind of like getting too serious, right? But I tell them, okay, so if you have four friends, let's say you signed up four friends. And what if those four friends signed up four friends? That's 16. All together, you would have 20. So if you have 20 people working with you, what if everybody got one customer a month for two years? That's over 400 customers. How many of you think that's possible? <laughs> to get 20 people to get one customer a month for two years. It's very possible, right? <laughs> so that's what it takes to make $100,000 a year in USANA. It's definitely doable. You can do it. The math is, it is what it is. These other businesses, these other ways of making money here, well, they're bonuses and incentives. Let me show you how big it can get. It can get really, really interesting. And just so you guys know, in this room, we have people who are already reaching some of these levels. There's gold, ruby, and et cetera, as you guys see on this chart here. This is what somebody who has hit gold director has made on a weekly basis for at least four weeks. Somebody who's hit ruby has made at least this much for about four weeks. So you can see the different ranks. Okay, you can recognize people say, so if you're gold, can you raise your hand real quick? Okay, so those people are gold directors. If you're a ruby, can you raise your hand real quick? Okay, so you guys have some rubies, right? Now, if you're talking, you can say, well, right now I'm a silver director, but my goal is to be here in the next three months. Yeah. Okay, so this is where you talk about it, right? I say, well, now when I talk, I say, well, I'm right here. Okay, I'm a three-star diamond director. My life is good, okay? And that's, <laughs> and that's all I do. Right? That's all I say. I don't have to say too much. But the point is, that's where I'm at. 
I'm doing well. Right? So after seeing something like this, there's always three types of people. I'm not here to change it. I'm just here to recognize it. If you're a C person, then you're maybe just a customer. You just want to consume products. And if that's the case, like if you're a friend, if you're from Brachi here and you just want to be a customer, great. Become a customer, enjoy the products, and that's it. Now if your friend is, if you're your, your friend's first customer, they're going to say this after today, $399. Okay, because they got $400, they got one, they need $399 more. So thank you for taking care of your health. It's a big thing. And when you start to feel the benefits, please send your friends our way. If you're a B, you have questions or concerns. The questions that you have are the concerns that you have. I'll feel that they're mostly just concerns. A lot of times people say they don't have the money to do this, they don't have the time to do this, or they don't think they can do this. Those are the three most common concerns. So here's what I have to say. If you don't have the money, let that be a motivator. And then I tell a story. At one of my first presentations, I saw a guy named Dennis talk about this. And he said this. He was a Chinese guy. And he said, if you don't have the money, sell your TV. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he goes, and if your TV doesn't cost much, sell your couch. Now you have money and time. And I remember thinking to myself, yeah, that's true. Because the people that I know that have, the, that have no money and no time have the biggest TV and the biggest couch. So it's not a matter of time or money. It's a matter of priorities. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? Get your priorities straight. What do you want? If you want financial freedom and success, maybe it's time for no TV and no couch for a while. Do you guys see what I'm doing? I'm like push. I'm like training them already. Yeah. And the last person says, I don't think I can do it. If you don't think you can do it, well, I agree with you. You can't do this because you have to learn how. So please go through training. This is what we do. We got to show you guys how we do it. But think about this. The first time you drove, how did you drive? Say, I give a story. Do you remember when you first started driving? And then? And then? <laughs> right? And how do most people drive nowadays? Have you seen that on the freeway? <laughs> how many people have ever driven with their knee before? If you can do that, you will be a diamond director in your <laughs> This is the story that I tell. And then there's the A people. The A people are the ones that say, I see it. I'm ready to get going. If you're ready, please get started today. Go through training. This is what we do. We will show you guys how we do it. The only thing I'm going to say is, please, don't talk to people until you've been through training. That's all. Because if you start calling people right away, here's what you're going to say. Hey, man, we're going to be rich. And they're going to say, how? Vitamins. Click. And people are not going to understand what you're trying to tell them. They need to come and see it the way you saw it. So talk to the friend that brought you so you can learn how to invite your friend correctly. Another thing, please don't start selling the products until you use them. Let me tell you what I mean. Don't call your friend and say, hey, are you taking Costco vitamins? Yeah. Well, the apples are black, dog. <laughs> you don't want to say that to your friends because they're not going to know what you're talking about yet. So thank you guys very much for coming. God bless and good night. And that's it. Okay. So that's about 20 minutes of doing the compensation plan. That's how I do it. Did you guys like it? Yes. Is it entertaining? Yes. Is it informative? Yes. Is it inspiring? Yes. That's it. Okay. So I explain. if I was doing it on a one-on-one, -on -one, I would do it the exact same way. I would be like, okay, let me show you. Because I would rather somebody get the concept than get the details. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody gets the details, but they don't get the concept, they don't do it. Yeah. But if someone gets the concept, regardless if they get the details, they sign up. So don't sell the details. Sell the concept. The concept is what? Working, time, money, health, and contribution, leverage. That's the concept. If they like all of it and they say, you know what? I love it, but I need a little more information. Okay, cool. What do you see? How does it all work? Like, Now you explain the details. Now you take them through it. Okay, here's how it works. It might take you a little longer, but some people don't need all those details to get going. Some people say, I see it. I get the concept. I like this. Let's go. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. I hope that was helpful. Yes. So the health portion is the same? The health portion, you can do the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't changed it much. It's still industry, company, products, and then what I just did. You don't have the wheel of the health? I mean, you can do it however you want. I like the wheel of health. You have that. I do. I do. I'm not going to do it right now because obviously we're way over time. But...
we'll probably do that at some point in the near future. I, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I think it's powerful. Yeah. I did it with my jokes involved. I did it explaining the psychology about why I do it. It was recorded, I'm sure. Please sell the concept. Because a lot of people freak out when they want to talk about the business plan. They're like, I don't want to talk about the business. Oh, my God. How do I explain the business, Mike? How do I explain the business? I'm like, dude, chill. Make sense? Explain the concept of the business. Don't explain the business. You follow me? <clears throat> Do people want a business out there right now? Yeah, but they don't even know how to, what to look for. That's why I explained huge expanding market, timing, leverage. Make sense? Okay. Unique product. Explain those things. Any other questions? Yes. What kind of results did you have when you started doing this? Well, I, I was doing something like this already, but I really just, in Australia, they said, just do what you want. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to test it out on these guys. So I just did it this way. I didn't even explain the left and the right. And they had record signups. Record signups. They said they had never signed up that many people ever. Wow. I was like, unbelievable. Now, I can see the problems that will come. People don't know the left, the right, the upside down, right side up. Like, I, I get it. People don't know that. But that's an easy fix. Yeah. When they join in training, you show the video. Right? That's the way we, we solve that. Wouldn't you rather get them to sign up and then show them that video so they get it yeah. versus watch, having them see that video first and getting that whole concept? Like, man, I don't know. I feel like it, we're doing it backwards easy concept to explain okay like watch that a few times and you'll get it you'll be able to talk to your friend like you know people say oh man that's that stupid you saw thing don't do that angel you're wasting your time just be like look man look there's four things you got to look at in the business see i feel like we could train people to explain it like that what are the four things to train to look for in a business come on I just went over it. A huge expanding market. What else? Timing. Timing. Leverage. And you need consumable product. If you talk like that, it's it's truth, bro. You're giving them truth. You can't fight it. You can't fight it. Think about it. Unique consumable product. Is a taco a unique consumable product? Well, some of them, right? What do they say? Well, we make our own tortillas. It's unique, right? Is it consumable? Yeah, it could, people consume it over and over and over, right? Timing. Make sense? Leverage. Does the guy have leverage? Well, the guy who owns it does. Does the employee have leverage? No. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, timing. Is it a good time to open up uh, taco trucks and food trucks? Yeah. Pretty good right now. It seems like food trucks is like a thing now. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to open up a real business anymore. They just want to do a food truck now. So timing seems good, right? And what else? Leverage, unique consumable product, huge expanding market. Yeah, so it's an expanding market, I would say, home businesses or people that want to start a business. Anyways, I'm letting you know, man, you guys can really hit a home run with this thing. I wish you guys the best. I won't be here next week. I'm flying out again. Does anybody want to go to Mexico with me? I'm leaving from the 3rd to the, to the 9th. November 3rd through November 9th. If anybody wants to go, let me know, okay? Just let me know. You, but be ready to be like, do some crazy stuff. I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go do all kinds of stuff out there. <laughs> I'm going to be hanging out with my rich friend. That's why. My $10 million a year friend, she's taking me out. So, But you're, you're welcome to come. Just let me know. Just come. And don't ask questions. All right. What else? Um, and then I'm going to and then I'm going to Europe on the 13th. I'll be in Europe from the 13th through the 26th. Okay? If you want to go to Europe, you're welcome to come, but you got to pay for your flight. That's it. Hello, Mexico. No. I'll go with you. You don't have to pay for your flight if you're going to Mexico. Only one. I can only bring one person. Okay? I can't bring a whole crew of people. <laughs> so if you guys want to come, like, we'll – everybody suggest it, like, on Facebook or something. I'll post, like, who deserves to come, and then we'll, we'll have to – I don't know. We'll figure it out somehow. All right, guys. I got to go. God bless you guys. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. Oh, shoot.